Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had the power of elemental Chidori Rasengan synergy? Here is short summary. When Naruto's Rasengan and Sasuke's Chidori clashed once more. They created a vortex sending a heavily injured Naruto through it. Landing in a new world he will have to learn of his new energy called, elements, and weapons known as, Makan, Challenge of Dark Magic Dragon. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Water trashed around like a storm has befallen the land. While lighting surged around the source of this whole ordeal. In the center of it were two young men both who knew suffering in their own way. One who never knew of love and lived a life many would drive any man into a dark path. The other a boy who witnessed the death of his family and searched for power to avenge them. These two were Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto has recently arrived saving Sakura from being killed by a Rouge Nin and ex-friend, Sasuke Uchiha. Kakashi was going to be the one to clash with Sasuke to end him. Since he was his responsibility. He helped the boy have a taste of power and soon it corrupted him. However one of Naruto's clones held him back as he charged towards the last Uchiha which lead to this the second time their signature attack clashed. How? Thought the Uchiha as he glared at Naruto. How can he still continues to match me? Sasuke's rage increased as their attacks were in a standstill. No I will end him. Here and now. Sasuke increased the Chidori's strength by pumping more chakra into it. However Naruto was a full chakra reserve and was able to match the Uchiha. But the blonde shinobi saw a black vortex being created beside them and felt it ing them in. Naruto looked toward Sasuke to see him completely focused on stabbing him, again with the Chidori. His mind began to race on all possible courses of actions. Instead it all lead to a single choice. You owe me one later Teme. Naruto used his free hand to make himself stand behind of the vortex. Soon increasing the force of his Rasengan propelled the two shinobis into opposite directions. Although Sasuke's sight was blurry and can barely tell what he was seeing. He saw an orange smudge that was Naruto going into some kind of black vortex before it vanished. The crashing of waves soon ended and Kakashi along with Sakura saw Sasuke being propelled towards the cliff. However there was no sight of Naruto. Zetsu appeared behind Sasuke before he could crash. The white skinned man looked around to see two Naruto clones however no Jinchuriki. Omadura is not going to like this. He thought as this put a small damper in their plans. And to make matters worse he wasn't able to see what happened to the boy due to being placed on the young Uchiha's back. His sensory ability only felt the Jinchuriki no longer being here. Wonder where he disappeared to. Thought the man as he sent a message to Madara of their current predicament. Dimension gap after entering the vortex Naruto was rendered unconscious. The only sensation he had before his world went dark was the sensation of falling. While he was unaware of his surroundings. Kiyubi was working on healing his body that was being best described as put into the grinder. This place wherever he was is attacking him and giving him from both severe to minor injuries. The biju was mostly focusing on the severe ones, the boy could heal the rest with a good night rest. But in a sudden moment he saw an orb made of white light floating outside of the seal. The kitsu knew this aura since it felt it a long time ago. Feeling calmer than he ever had before he applied the orb into the boy's chakra tube. Soon it went from light blue to almost a whitish blue color. Now he had to wait for the boy to confront him. Soon the black space began to turn white. And Naruto finally reached the end of the vortex. But now the question is, is the world ready for him? Unknown universe a young teen has arrived to his dorm. He was going to attend Tenbi Academy, with little to no knowledge of the place. Only knowing that it was once an all-girl school turned co-ed. The school when it first opened was an all-boy school. He has spiky orange hair that is shaved close on the sides and forms a crown in the back. He has a pair of glasses. He had a casual clothing of a black t-shirt with jeans and white sneakers. This teen is Takaru Oyama. Tomorrow the semester begins. Better start pack. He then heard something clash in the bushes beside him. He sees a teen possibly his age covered in cuts. W what happened to you? The following day, ah. Uh. Naruto grunted as he opened his eyes. He looked around to see that he was in an apartment and currently knew. If all the boxes that were in the room is to go by. Where am I? He looked down to see his body wrapped in medical tape. Oh you're awake. 
The blonde turned to look at Teen wearing a white sleeveless shirt and blue jeans. I found you outside yesterday and let me tell you I was worried. All those injuries looked painful. I see well thanks man. Um I'm Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto. The young shinobi extended his hand and the teen shook it. Name's Uyama Takaru. So can I ask how you ended up like that? As Naruto was about to respond, the door opened to the room. Takaru? It's me Haruko. I thought I can walk you to school for your first day, said a female voice. Naruto turned to look at Takaru, friend of yours? The orange-haired teen chuckled as he rubbed the back of his head. Yeah childhood friend to be exact. Oh okay I'm going to open the door now. Soon Takaru and Naruto were greeted by Haruko. She has long purple hair that reach maybe past her waist, held up in a single ponytail by a red ribbon. The rest of her hair was on her face in several bangs. Light blue eyes. She blew with red lining sailor suit with a white and red lining and pantyhose underneath her skirt. Hey Takaru, she looked to Naruto who was on the sofa with bandages wrapped around his body. And who is your friend? The name is Uzumaki Naruto. Pleasure to meet you, he said with a smile. Nice to meet you too. My name is Amaya Haruko, um. Can I ask why you were injured? She asked trying to not to be rude. Yeah, I mean you were covered in several cuts. Thankfully I was able to put enough bandages. Naruto looked at the two. He can tell that they are good people. Takaru brought him here and attended to his wounds. While Haruko has that big sisterly aura like Ayame. Okay but you guys better have a good open mind okay? The two teens nodded at him. Naruto soon began to tell him how he and his friend clashed with one another creating some kind of vortex. He also told them the basic of his home like chakra and shinobi arts. Takaru and Haruko mentally agreed that this guy's friend was a complete jerk. They have only recently met the blonde and they already see him as a friend. But for this, Sasuke to try and hurt him was a very clear sign that he wasn't friendly. Wait so you are a ninja? Asked Takaru. Yep. Who wears orange? Naruto gave Takaru a stink eye. Are you insulting the color orange? The teen can tell that if he answered incorrectly it may lead to some pain. He put this as a mental note for the future. And no I just asking since mostly ninjas wear black. Naruto calmed down and smiled. Yeah but if I was able to hide in plain sight wearing an orange jumpsuit when I was younger. It show how much skills I have in the art of stealth. Takaru nodded in that point. To use one's clothing as a way to train in their stealth would be genius. So Naruto what is this chakra? Asked Haruko curious. Well chakra is a combination of two energies. Physical energy that is collected from each and every one of the body's cells and can be increased through training, stimulants and exercise. And spiritual energy which derived from the mind's consciousness and can be increased through studying, meditation and experience. So if you make the two energies stronger the chakra will become more powerful. Said Naruto giving them a quick rundown. So what happens if you lose all your chakra? Asked Takaru. Simple, you die. Takaru and Haruko gulped at that. To what they heard this chakra appears to be powerful. And like all forms of power it has a cost. But never expected it to your own life. And judging by you guys not knowing this. Means I am not in the elemental nations anymore. Huh said the blonde. Hi. You were in Japan. And we never heard of that place before, said Haruko. Naruto sighed at that and looked at the two. Well since I am in a new world with zero knowledge about it. So if it's possible, he put out a smile. Can I also join your guy's school? Takaru and Haruko smiled at the thought. Their new friend attending school with them was a pleasant thought. Naruto had a calm aura that would be nice to have around. Sure you can come with us said Haruko, so what is the name of this school? Haruko stood up and gave him a hand, the name is Tenbi Academy. Path to Tenbi the three teens were walking through a park to reach their destination. Takaru gave Naruto a spare white shirt and tie, which Haruko had to help do, and blue pants. Naruto decided to stick with his ninja sandals since he had a different foot size to Takaru. He also had his kanai pouch which was wrapped around his right leg. So tell me something. Why did you choose Tenbi Academy? asked Haruko. It's because, you don't need to take a test or interview to register. Also it has campus housing. But most importantly, it was just turned co-ed, and there will be loads of girls, he said with excitement in his voice. His glasses had a shine in the end. Not another one. Naruto said in a low voice unable to be heard by the two. 
I became friend with another pervert. Why? Why do you curse me like this Kami? Naruto thought as he looked at the sky. Naruto and Haruko listened to Takaru rant about how he has suffered during his time in his old all-boy middle school. But all came down to him not having any female interaction about it. In Naruto's head Jiraiya would be suffering the same way as Takaru if he was put on that spot. Baka. Said the two while Haruko walked with confidence. Takaru-kun. Do you even know anything about the school? Asked Haruko, getting the interest of Naruto. What? Besides it being co-ed this year, it's just a normal school, isn't it? Said the orange-haired boy. Naruto hit his face and sighed. This guy was so blinded by the school being co-ed, that he didn't get any information about it. Well Aero Senen looks like I found your long-lost son. No, this school is different from the others, said the busty female. In what way? Asked Takaru and Naruto at the same time. For example, well there is the martial arts tournament and there's the culture festival dance. This got Naruto's attention. He never had gone to a festival unless you count the few he went on his three-year training trip. And this tournament could be a good way to improve his taijutsu. A dance? Said Takaru. We also have festival dance in Miko clothes, said Haruko. Miko. A ball with a Miko, shouted Takaru. Naruto looked at his friend's face as he went to Perv Land. So, you're saying that I don't have to wait till New Year's to admire a Miko? Naruto sweat dropped at his word. Forget son he is the reincarnation of the pervert's libido. That's what you were excited about. Shouted Haruko in anger. The blonde stepped back sensing the female fury was coming. Attention please. Disciplinary committee and entrance ceremony preparation members, please head to your assigned positions. I have to go now said Haruko after she heard the announcement. EHH. I'm a preparation member. The entrance ceremony will be held in the gym. Don't mess around, head straight there. Also Naruto. The blonde looked at the violet-haired girl. I will tell the principal about you being a late entry. So follow Takaru okay? You got it. Said giving her a salute making her giggle. All right see ya. Haru ne. Uyama Takaru-san. Uzumaki Naruto-san. The two looked at Haruko. However, Takaru was blushing at the sight of her smile. Welcome to Tenbi Academy. Naruto smiled since he was never greeted to school with such warmth. Soon girls began to enter the school all talking about it being co-ed. Naruto waved at a few with smile. However, he wondered what was with the blush on their faces. He soon looked at Takaru who had the face of winning the lottery. Come on take San. We need to head to the gym he said dragging his friend by the back of the shirt. Few minutes later, we're lost, said Naruto looking around. Well it's obvious this would happen. Neither of us know where the gym is being new and all, said Takaru cheering Naruto a little. To open one's own path, to confirm one's true purpose, one's souls shall be sworn to live with Tenbi, said a girl's voice from out of nowhere. The path of the sun, said a second voice, shall be imprinted in the sky said a third voice. Naruto and Takaru soon were hit by a wave of energy. Naruto looked in front of him to see two girls. The one on the right has light blue hair with a blue ribbon making a ponytail and teal blue eyes. She held a sword in her hand that was crackling with lightning on the guard. While the one on the left has short red hair a small bandage on her nose and purple eyes, she also has fingerless gloves. What is that? Naruto focused on the energy coming from the two. It felt like chakra but different for some reason. Could this world have something similar to it? Soon the blue-haired girl sent a wave of energy towards her opponent. The girl responded by jumping high above dodging the attack. Soon her shoes were covered in a metallic boot that reached her knee. The two girls soon charged at one another passing one another. Am I dreaming? Said Takaru adjusting his glasses. No you are not. This is real. Said Naruto as he watched the two girls. He can tell that they are fighters by their respected stance. He focused chakra into his ears to listen on their conversation. If I win, you'll return him to me, said the sword-wielding girl. And if I win, you'll stop bugging me about him, said the redhead whipping the upper part of her nose. Poor him, said the blue knit in a dramatic way. He's already mine, shouted the redhead as she charged. I won't let that happen, she said as her sword went to strike, that was blocked by the boots. They got into a stalemate with both trying to one up the other. By what he can see, the blue knit has no experience in hand combat. 
but knew her skills in kenjutsu, while the redhead was an up-close fighter with experience on fighting weapon wielders. Ha 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 ha. Naruto and Takaru looked up to see a girl on the tree beside them. The girl has long blonde hair styled into twin tails, green eyes and a slender body. She was hanging upside down from one of the branches. Naruto averted his eyes to focus back on the fight, he didn't want to be on the any girl's bad side. Is that all right, Oju? To allow such a fight? Naruto heard a voice but could see a ball of orange light floating beside her. What's wrong with it? I mean, after knowing the trivial reason behind their fight it's just too interesting, she said with amusement laced in her voice. Excuse me. Huh? She turned to look at Takaru and Naruto. However, the blonde was more focused on the fight than her. Two guys? Didn't they say that the school will be co-ed from now on? Said the ball of light. Naruto looked lower to see that whenever it spoke it would shine a little. Oh, that's true. Well, what do you want? Said the girl. Takaru soon began to make charades. And the girl looked at the hand clues he was giving. Two, are completely, visible? What era is this joke from? Said the ball of light. Was he really born in this era? Said the girl. And soon realized when she looked up and her panties were exposed, she soon covered them. However, the fight came to an end with the red head kicking the sword out of the blue net's hand. Seeing where it was going Naruto was going to intercept it. However, Takaru was there so he became a landing cushion for the girl. Naruto watched as light appeared as the two kissed. Oju! Shouted the orb as it rushed towards the girl. The girl pulled back covering her lips as she looked at the knocked out Takaru with a blush. A white, sky! Said Takaru as he had full view of what is under her skirt. A white sky, I understand. She said grabbing him by his collar. Then let me send you to the sky kingdom. The girl said with anger prepared to give him a good punch to the face. I'm sorry. I didn't see them. I didn't see white panties or anything like that. You just said the color of her panties. Which was confession to actually seeing them. Thought Naruto as he prayed for his friend's swift punishment. Why you? Said the girl as her hand loosened. Are you alright, Oju? said the ball as the girl lost all her fury. Naruto and Takaru were confused on her word, but Takaru decided to use the chance to escape. We have to go to the gym now. Excuse me. Come on Naruto. See you later you two, said Naruto as he followed Takaru. I've found him. I've found my sworn enemy. Wait did that boy say too? She said as she looked at the small ball of light. That to her resembles a small man with flaming orange-yellow hair wearing a red hakama pant and shirt with white lining. Tenbi Jim Naruto laid back on the wall since the preparation committee weren't prepared for a late arrival. His soon wondered to the woman that was on the woman that was testing the microphone. She has long dark purple hair and wearing a magenta dress. On the side was Haruko along with another girl. She has blonde hair braided into a ring that hangs from the back of her head with a bun where the braid meets she also has red-rimmed glasses. By what he can tell from her posture she is strict. Everyone. Congratulations on your admission. I am Tenbi Academy's principal, Rokuju Minori. As I welcome the new students today, I'd like to introduce our school. Our school's motto is, mind, beauty, body. Whether it is mind or body they both are beautiful and strong. This concept will not change even now that we became a co-ed school. The meaning of this principle is to let boys and girls harden themselves, and while abiding by the school's rules, to freely learn, love, and battles, said the principal. Love and battles, thought the blonde as he thought about it. The concept of love was something he didn't fully comprehend due to his past experience, and battle was something that was common on his land. But on some of his fight he fought for those he placed bond with to get stronger. Maybe that is what she meant. Additionally, Everyone will receive the element to fight for the eight, Makin. This got Naruto's attention even more. If you can become the owner of the eight, Makin, by controlling your element, you'll surely have a very bright future. The blonde shinobi thought about those two girls fighting the energy they were emitting and weapons they wielded. Could those be element and Makin? Well, rather than listening to me, it's easier to understand by watching. 2B, number 6, Kinyua Garrett. Minori said now giving the name of the blue net from earlier. Also from 2B, number 7, Shinatsu Azuki. Giving the name of the redhead. Principal Minori, Azuki-san and I have already had our battle. Informed Garrett to the principal. Ah, is that so? Of course, and I won. 
said Azuki with a bit of arrogance in her voice. Che. Oh, my poor Teddy. From now on, Azuki-san will hug you tightly every night, white tears are soaking the pillow. Said Garrett in a dramatic fashion. Naruto held back his laugh seeing what she did. Sly girl, knocking the eco of Azuki in such an embarrassing way. A. Hey, who'd think that Azuki-san would have such interest? Said the principal while he saw her crying act ending giving her opponent a victory looks, and they battled for that. No, I mean stop talking. I'm just giving a small payback, said Garrett before laughing in triumph. And Naruto still being a prankster in heart gave a mental bow to such a well-played move. What do we do now, principal? Then let's have someone else demonstrate, said Minori to the blonde girl beside her. Principal said a familiar girl getting the attention of all the new guys in school, minus Naruto. I, Himagami Kodama, would like to carry out this battle. So that is her name. But why would she, oh no, his eyes wandered to Takaru. Himagami soon turned to look at Takaru as well and pointing at him. I'd like my opponent to be him. Amy? H hold on, Himagami-san. Takaru, no Uyama Takaru-kun is a new student. Haruko tried to stop the fight. Oh? So his name is Takaru? said the lowly twin tailed blondie. Yeah, he's a childhood friend, I mean. To be chosen as an opponent on one's first day is too dangerous, said Haruko looking at the principal. It's just as the vice president says, principal, the opponent should be changed, said the glasses wearing girl. Well, isn't it okay? said Minori in a calm manner. How can you say that? said Haruko now worried for her friend. Then Mr. New Student, come on. Hurry and prepare yourself backstage, said the woman calling Takaru up. Naruto watched as the other students gang up on him to go up and fight. He frowned since Takaru now knew what he has gotten himself into. But he heard his word of fighting girls. The blonde shinobi shook his head as he grew in a world where you fight males and females equally. However, the look he saw on Himagami was one that could frighten any academy student. Now, the entrance ceremony special battle contest will begin. Naruto watched as Takaru was trembling in the upcoming battle. The guy by what he can now tell never was in a fight. The participants are Kenkibu, 2A, number 20, Himagami Kodama, as well as the new student Uyama Takaru-kun. Takaru was distracted so badly he didn't see Himagami already in front of him. Naruto was the only one to hear them clearer than the other students. Kiddo. Yes. Me? What's wrong? You seem nervous. I'm sorry for just now. It's okay. But more importantly, relax your shoulder. Although this is called a battle, we're just pretending. Of course, I won't go all out. Just make some karate poses. I'll take care of everything else. Said Kadama before going back to her starting spot. However, Naruto frowned at that. By the way Garrett and Azuki fought outside this wasn't pretend. Takaru can get seriously hurt or worse be crippled. What are you planning, Oju? said the ball of orange light that appeared beside her. Are you worried? Don't worry, said the girl as she lifted her left hand and the next word made Naruto ready to go into battle. I won't kill him, just yet. Lightning soon began to appear on her hand. Ikazuki. Now a ball of yellow light appeared on her hand. What up? Now plant a timed lightning ball into that guy's heart. Naruto curled his hand into a fist at the girl's wording. He knew how lightning felt being hit, it hurt like a. He won't let anybody else experience such thing again. As you can see, he has no resistance against elements at all. Now that he still hasn't taken any precautions, it'll induce a shock to his hear and may kill him several days later. Oju, if you overdo it Kamigari will take notice of you, said the orange ball. Kamigari, thought Naruto the name sounded similar to Akatsuki. Also, even if it's because of your affinity, you don't hold any grudge towards him personally. I know that, I know that well. However, it won't calm down. My blood. Himagami took a look at Haruko. The shinobi can see that Haruko got worried for Takaru. If it gets ugly he will be her opponent. No friend of his will die. The time limit is three minutes. Start. Himagami charged at Takaru. And soon they began a minor fight at a speed of an academy student. Naruto can tell it was fake. Soon he felt a killing intent coming from Himagami. She moved faster than everybody else could react, wheel all but one. Enough. Naruto thought as he disappeared from his spot and appeared beside of Himagami. Soon Naruto appeared and coated his hand with wind chakra. 
he put his hand forward preventing her attack to continue and a power struggle began between them. Naruto looked at Himagami who turned to look at him showing yellow slit eyes unlike her previous green one. He soon pushed her back. What was that it didn't felt like elements but denser and stronger, though Himegima. You okay Takaru? Naruto turned to look at Takaru however there was another person with him. She has light brown hair and brown eyes. She also has red gauntlet with yellow claws along with engraving and a green jewel on the top of the palm. So who's your friend? Minori looked at the girl with interest. That Makan is not a replica. It's one of the real original eight Makan. If that is the case, and that boy, her eyes wandered to the spiky haired blonde. He coated his hand with something akin to element. Finally. We finally meet. Said the brown haired girl looking at Takaru. Takaru saw, Ma. She said as she fainted and was caught by Takaru. Are you alright? Asked the glasses wearing boy. The soon woke up and turned to look at Takaru. Um, uh was all he could say before he was embraced by the girl. I'm happy to meet you, Takaru-sama, said the girl. Soon all the boys were in shock and were releasing some killing intent. While the girls cheered at the sight, along with a few blushing at Naruto. Naruto chuckled at how things were not going to be dull anytime soon. He turned to look at a devastated Haruko and he almost fell on the floor laughing. Look, can I ask something? How do you know my name? He said nervously. Takaru-sama, you smell nice, said the girl with a cat-like smile. Impure contact between s is forbidden, shouted Haruko that was now standing on the platform. Harune. Wh who are you? And how do you know Takaru? Asked Haruko shaking in possible anger. The girl sticks her tongue out like saying, whoops, it was cute and adorable, and soon looked at Haruko. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Kushia Anaho. From now on, I'll be here to protect Takaru-sama. Protect me? As Takaru-sama's fiancé, said Anaho. Naruto balled his hand and bit it, suppressing the urge to laugh at Haruko's expression. And when Anaho gave Takaru a kiss, Takaru was a very happy guy, and hell has risen from the ground. Haruko soon gave a feminine fury that could make Sakura look tamed. Can I ask why you tried to kill Takaru? asked Naruto to Himagami while everyone was distracted by Takaru getting a beating of a lifetime. The twin-tailed girl looked at Naruto with a guilty expression. How did you? That can be explained another time. Now answer my question, he asked not dropping the subject. That is something personal. Also he looked under my skirt and stole a kiss from me, she said not wanting him explained to him. All right, Himagami looked at Naruto, amazed by him not wanting to go deeper into the subject. I can understand the last two since it's any women will beat a pervert for what Takaru did. But can I say one thing? Try to get to know him first before killing him. To kill anybody without a true given reason is just makes you no better than those scum who kill for the hell of it. Naruto said as he soon walked toward the dust cloud hopefully to retrieve a still intact Takaru. Principal's office Naruto now stood in front of Minori. After the ceremony ended she called on him to come to her office. Not wanting to get lost he followed her to her office. So can you tell me more about yourself Naruto-kun? She said as she brought a file with his name. Opening it to reveal nothing. Since you aren't even a registered student. And don't appear in any database in Japan. Naruto sighed as he soon told her the same story he said to Takaru and Haruko. Minori however looked unchanged, however mentally she was going through the possibilities. The boy has an ability that nobody has in this world and had a small similarity to, element. If she plays her cards right she may have the greatest ally to protect Tenbi, and also against that bastard. A right Naruto-kun let's make a deal. You can attend Tenbi and be given a room in the apartment complex owned by the school, we will create a fake birth certificate for you and implanted to the Japanese database along with a transcript for your legal registration to the school. You can find jobs in the city for you to work on so you can gain money to buy any furniture and food. However, all I ask is to join, make and key, said Minori. Maken Ki? Yes, also known as Mado Kenke Kako. It's made up of the Security Committee, Kenkibu, the Magical Enforcement Committee and the Student Council. All its members have sworn to protect Tenbi and their students, and are judges in duels and ensure that these are carried out honorably and fairly, said Minori. Naruto thought about it and was a good deal. He gets to go to school, get a place to crash, cover all possible connections to an alternate world and work to protect the school. Sounds like a plan. All right, 
Also you will get a room number 9 two doors beside that of your friend Takaru. We will talk further about living arrangements later on, said Minori. Okay. And Minori Chan, thank you for accepting me into the school, he said giving a namikaze smile. Minori was not prepared to be given a smile that made her feel like jelly. I it's nothing also take this. Also here is your uniform, she said handing him a standard boy uniform. Naruto looked at it and came up with an idea, giving a fox-like smile to his principal. Hey Mino-chan is it possible to get a custom-made uniform? The woman gave a seductive smile, which sent shiver on his spine. Oh, so it's Mino-chan. Well I like the pet name Sanuru-kun. What is it you have in mind? This is how Naruto began his adventure and life in a new world, and become a legend in both worlds. As the sun began to rise for the second day of school, the only one to actually be awake before the other students was our resident Shinobi. After his conversation with Minori and getting all of his school supply, she told him his custom uniform will come in two days, so she will allow him to continue to wear his current apparel. He sent his cage bunshin last night while he slept into the city to scout it out. A few of them has come across with the low lives of the city, in response beaten the living daylight out of them and took their cash. Hey they're scum so they don't need the money. Then using the small earned money went to a casino almost bankrupt them, using Henge to impersonate some of the older attackers. He now had knowledge of the city and gained a small fortune. Another group of his clones decided to train after exploring the city. Naruto had several scrolls of futon techniques but never had the time to train at them. Now he had wind release, slash, wind release, gale palm, blade of wind, wind release, drilling air bullet and body flicker, wind variant. They also learned fuinjutsu from the scrolls Jiraiya has given him. Naruto woke up at these memories with only an hour and a half for school to start. The blonde was surprised on how easily he was able to grasp the art of fuinjutsu. He planned on putting a few gravity seals along with restriction seal for his physical training and a storage seals for his shinobi gear. While the last group decided to learn a bit about this world. They mainly trained in their writhing since both worlds had similar ways of writhing. It was also a good way to train for fuinjutsu since the users need a steady hand and swift precise movements. He now had brief knowledge but will later ask Minori for a tutor to fill in the gap. He will need it since he was the idiot of the class due to sabotage. Yeah he knew it but no one would believe the village demon. Jiraiya during their three year training trip also help him in getting smarter. The reason why he was okay with going to school unlike when he was younger. Now we find him finishing his light training before heading to school. He did 5 laps around the apartment complex, 50 push ups, 50 abdominal crunches, 50 squats, and 100 jumping jacks. All with under the influence of a gravity seal that was 5 times earth gravity and restriction seals. Thankfully, his regenerative properties allowed him to regain all of his energy after the workout. Alright time to go to my room, eat breakfast and head to class. Naruto was about to do a body flicker but hear Takaru yell in pain. Really? This early and already being beaten up. Sai oh well, not my problem since I am not the one who is being punished. Naruto soon did a tiger seal and he vanished but a leaving behind a small vortex of wind while pushing the dust around his last spot. Tenbi Academy after eating his breakfast, Naruto arrived at the gate and saw a sight that made him gain a full blown blush. Minori had her hair up in a ponytail held by a black ribbon and was wearing an orange tracksuit with white stripes on the side with a pair of slippers. It was also slightly open reaching the upper part of her stomach giving a nice view off her bust. And because Jiraiya forced him to learn how to measure a woman by a single glance. Minori's bust were bigger than Tsunade's. Seeing something you like. Said Minori in a seductive voice while putting her hands under her bust making them look bigger. Is it wrong that I find my principal hot wearing an orange tracksuit? And how does she have an eye cup? Thought Naruto as he stayed quiet admiring Minori's beauty. Heaven up in heaven three men were watching a young blonde in his current predicament. These three are Jiraiya, Hiruzen and Zabuza. People who Naruto came to respect for their own unique reasons. Lucky brat. Shouted Jiraiya. His apprentices always were able to have beautiful women appear on their laps like it was nothing, while he didn't get squat. Good for Naruto. Smirked Serutobi at his pseudo-grandson. The woman was a good catch. And knowing the boy he would swoon her over. He saw how Naruto was able to win the heart of women, but was blinded by his crush to see it. Maybe he can find love in this world. 
Damn that woman has enough to compete with Mei Chan, said Zabuza. Damn it! shouted a jealous super pervert. Now he was jealous of Zabuza and his past relationship with a woman like Mei Terumi who could rival Tsunade in the bust department. Back with Naruto, ye know I mean, you look great Mino Chan, said Naruto trying to control himself. He didn't want to act like a pervert to his principal. He shall not fall the dark path of his deceased sensei. That path leads to untold pain by the opposite gender and cold lonely nights. Minori smiled at his reaction. He looked cute when teased and blushing. And she had a small blush on the honest compliment. Many of the men she has come across always ask about her friend. And the only one who even showed interest on her, well she dislikes him. Thank you Naru kun she soon looks towards the front gate to see four students arriving almost late. Hey, you guys. Minori said as she pulled out a paper fan from out of nowhere. School has just begun and you already want Minori Chan's paper fan to throw flames? Naruto soon sees Haruko, Himagami, and Anaho passing the gate. Good. Three female students barely made it, said Minori. Naruto looked at the last member of the group tiered and exhausted. Note to self-help train Takaru in increasing his stamina and speed. Cause it is beyond pathetic. Naruto vanished and appeared behind Takaru. And once more appeared in front of Haruko. Takaru however fell to the ground noxious of the sudden acceleration of speed. Man up, be glad I didn't throw you over the gate. Takaru are you okay? Asked a worried Haruko. While Himagami continued on. She turned to look at Takaru and her eyes shifted to a yellow with a slit pupil. Takaru shivered at the sight of the eyes while Naruto stood his ground. There it is again. Her eyes can change just like mine when I tap into Kiyubi's chakra. What is she? Thought the blonde. Could there be something similar to Jinchuriki in this world, or is it part of her, Makan? Haruko-san. All eyes soon turned to focus on the blonde girl that stood beside Haruko during the entrance ceremony. President. You, as student council vice president, were almost late. You can't be an example for the new students like this," said the girl with authority in his voice. Naruto cringed a little recalling that tone of voice when being lectured by Uruka. Those were dark days. I'm very sorry. Harune, that person is. Asked Takaru having no idea of who she is. Naruto was going to ask but his orange-haired friend beat him to the punch. That's the student council president, Takaki Furan san She's this school number one model student. Also she's famous for being two times as strict as others, said Haruko. Su behave good around Furin. Got it. Thought Naruto keeping that to himself. Vice President. Yes. E even if this is a co-ed school, T talking to a male student from so close up. Furin said trying to say in a strong demeanor. However, Naruto noticed how she was trembling when pointing at the two childhood friends. Did something happen to her to make her feel uncomfortable around the opposite? Naruto thought as he clenched his hand. Even do he recently meet Furin. He hates men who would harm women in such a way. It's not like that. Take, know the new student Uyama kun is a childhood friend of mine, said the vice president. A childhood friend? said Furin. She soon looked repulsed when Takaru gave her a smile. Naruto sensed a small breeze and noticed Furin's skirt slightly moving upward. Not wanting her to feel uncomfortable he moved Takaru's head to avoid looking at her direction. He was also going to move his head but was too slow. He saw her white panties with an orange ribbon and light blue markings. But then she covered it to turn around and revealing. A bear. Thought Naruto as he soon looked away and had a small blush. Who knew that the strict girl had such a cute side. He will tease her about it once she is comfortable with him around. Naruto let go of my head. It feels like it will snap said Takaru as he tried to move his head back but unable to since he wasn't strong enough. It's a bear, said Anaho in joy. President, Haruko said looking surprised by the sight. You're wearing unexpectedly cute underwear. Himagami nodded approving of such cute choice of underwear. Furin soon began to feel embarrassed and tears accumulated in her eyes. Unable to hold her emotions back she shouted. No. Naruto was used to the screaming since Sakura was ten times louder. I wonder if someone figured out if that is a keke Jenke? Hurry to your classrooms, said Minori commanding the student to make haste, while tapping her paper fan on her shoulder. Naruto nodded as he soon dragged Takaru to the classroom. Behind them was Anaho following them. 
Classroom Naruto soon opened the door with Takaru and Anaho beside him. Sorry for being late. My friend here decided to sleep a little longer. Naruto. Shouted Takaru as Naruto smiled. Oh my. With this everyone in the class has gathered. Said a long blonde hair with two hair antenna forming in the front of her face and bangs on the side. She also has brown colored eyes and a blue hair clip. She short sleeve gray shirt with a short turtle neck and blue skirt. Ah, yes. Said Takaru. That guy. I'm sure that yesterday he. He came together with a girl. Hey the blonde one also appeared out of nowhere and stopped that blonde chick's attack. His school life has just started and it's already rose-colored, one whined at Takaru's relationship with Anaho. Was all that the boys said about the two? Naruto sighed and continued on Takaru soon followed. So she's really his girlfriend, isn't she? At least the one with whiskers I available, and he is pretty cute. Naruto blushed at that remark he was never the focus of his past female classmates. Now they all had their sights on him. So this is how Sasuke felt, better give him some credit. Good, good. Everyone please be quiet. I'm this class's homeroom teacher, Amado Tamika. Nice to meet you. She said closing her eyes and giving everyone a small smile. The sound of footsteps sounded outside of the classroom. And the assistant homeroom teacher is, she was interrupted by the door opening. All boys rejoice. Said a very familiar voice to Naruto. I'm Tenbi Academy's principal and idol, Rokuho Minori Chan. Naruto looked at Minori as she pumped her fist into the air and her chest jiggled a little. Best assistant teacher ever. Thought the blonde shinobi. Anyone would be better than Mizuki, but a woman like Minori was the best thing to happen. Then, today we'll immediately start, Tamika continued the class. While Minori looked at the teacher with small anger. Ignoring me, are you? By going to the infirmary and doing a physical checkup said the homeroom teacher. Naruto however did a shiver recalling all the bad experience he had with doctors. Most specifically those during his childhood, Tsunade and Sakura. Okay. Girls move to the corridor. Commanded the school's principal, but not without giving Naruto a small wink. Leaving the poor shinobi to blush. I'll go now, Takaru-sama. Said Anaho giving him a salute. All of the girls giggle at her actions. However, all the boys soon sent a piercing stare at Takaru. Naruto on the other hand sent a small pulse of killing intent making the boys focus back to the front board, having small sweat on their forehead. Got to love that trick. Sensei. Shouted Takaru and the boy sitting beside him. Oh my. What's wrong? My stomach is aching a little, I need to go to the toilet. Said the two in perfect sync. Oh my. That's terrible. Although there is still some time, please hurry. While the teacher showed concern for the two, one of Naruto's eyebrows was twitching. He saw the perverted look Takaru did and heard when he said, Koed, Jiraiya, we're such a pervert that you needed two reincarnations. Better keep them in line. So a good, prank, is in order. Thought the boy with an evil gleam in his eyes. Konoha many of the resident in the village were either working, doing their daily routine or doing finishing touches for the remodeling of the village. That is until many stopped in their place taking in a quick breath of air. A cold shiver went down their spine and a feeling of dread befallen on them. They knew this feeling all too well. They had suffered in his so-called, art, for six years many of the villagers let them be civilians, shinobi or clan members suffered. And they all recovered after it stopped for four years. But now some poor soul opened the forbidden box. B by Kami he has returned. One of the merchants hyperventilated recalling running from a pack of dogs hungry to sink their teeth into him for smelling like well-cooked meat. I it can't be. Th that sideshish should have been forgotten. When he graduated. Said a store owner as trembled in seeing his store how it was covered in orange paint and glitter. He was unable to be removed it from any of the merchandise and lost profit for a week. The village's resident snake mistress did a smile that could make any man run for their lives. Oh the sensation of chaos and upcoming humiliation. Only one person is able to give such sense of wondrous act. Everyone in complete unison said the word that spelled doom to those who were on his list. The prankster king from hell has returned. Tenbi Academy, thank you very much. They both said. Soon ran out of the room. Naruto on the other hand dropped a small blonde mouse that was a cage bunchen in a henge and following the two. Hey he used these justice so much that he can do it without hand seals or creating smoke. With Cage Bunshin Naruto the small mouse followed Takaru and the other boy. Even do Takaru showed being physically weak. 
The strength of his inner pervert made him run faster matching a high-class academy student. Soon the two perverts climbed the tree that has a view into the infirmary. Let's see. Cannot do anything too severe. Better go with the classic. The mouse soon pulled out a bottle of itching powder. Climbing up the tree the mouse soon created a clone. The original clone put the powder on Takaru, later threw it to his partner and did it to the other guy. Soon the two mooses watched as Takaru and the other pervert began to scratch themselves. Then it picked up the intensity, soon fell of the branch, and rolled around the grass, rubbed their backs against the tree trunk and scratching their butts like a dog. Soon the two headed inside the school. The sound of mooses laughing was heard on the tree barks. That was amusing. The two mooses looked up to see Himagami. Now I ask how you were able to do that. No normal animal can create clones. The two mooses shrugged before giving her a salute and dispersing into smoke. Now Himagami was interested in those mooses and whom they belonged to. Infirmary Naruto along with the rest of the males were now heading out to the infirmary. The blonde soon gained the information and smiled at the use of a classic prank. It felt nice doing something he has done when he was a kid. Great way on how to make and set a trap along with training and stealth. A few minutes later Takaru and the other boy appeared with scratch marks on their bodies. What happened to you too? He asked. It appears we are allergic to something, said Takaru. Soon they were all measure in both weight and height. Naruto apparently has grown a few more inches which he hasn't noticed until now. He now stood a 5 feet 8 inches and weighed 130 lb 4 inches taller. Soon he along with every boy in the room heard a woman speak. Don't move. Yes just like that. Said the woman behind the curtains. W wait w h what? Naruto thought. He has heard that line before. When he was younger and living in the red light district. He accidentally entered a room inside of a brothel to hide from a mob and hid under the bed. When he was going to leave two people entered preventing him from escaping in fear of being sent to the mob. Naruto lost his virgin ears as he heard the two people running like animals on the bed. When it ended and left the room he left through the window and decided to never speak of the event again. Good put it in. Said the woman. Naruto began to blush at the thought of this woman doing something so erotic in the presence of all of these boys. What kind of medical professional does that? Even do the image was pretty hot. Damn you Jiraiya. Screamed Naruto mentally at his deceased teacher. His teaching has finally begun to affect him. You have to put it deeper. She said. Soon the rest of the males in the room began to follow his line of thought. It took them all a while to get the picture. And Naruto cursed his godfather for being such a pervert in his accursed books. Why did he have to be trained by the biggest pervert in the elemental nation? Yes, just like that. Uh, what? Said Takaru. Being the voice of all the males in the room. Naruto heard a male gulp at the thought of the woman behind the curtain doing to his fellow classmate. That was too fast. You have to hold back a little, said the woman. Naruto had a bit of steam coming out of his head. The woman must have been so good that the guy in less than a few seconds has experienced an orgasm. By Kami is this woman must be a professional. Okay. Pull your hand. When she said this Naruto calmed himself down. Apparently all of the word just fell out of context. Way out of context. Soon Takaru went and apparently by the machine was unable to find a Makan compatible to him. Two other males went before it was his turn. Next one please, said the woman as Naruto headed over. And soon saw what had many of the boys blushing and looking at with. Right there in front of him was a young woman with bright blue hair and brown eyes. She was wearing a large white lab coat which she keeps open, since she is a school nurse of the academy. Under the lab coat she wears pink strapless top which is openly laced down the middle revealing a lot of her cleavage, along with a very short brown skirt. She shifted her legs revealing green panties to him. Are those marks real? She asked in curiously looking at his whiskers. Heaven Jiraiya, Serutobi and Zabuza all shot back with blood gushing out of their noses. They had never thought it was possible for a woman to have that size. They also began to curse like sailors for being dead and not being at the boy's spot. Jiraiya soon recovered with flames bursting from his eyes. Naruto, as my apprentice I command, now I order you to take that woman as your future mate. Tenbi Academy, Infirmary. Yeah they are birthmarks. He said with a calm smile while the woman chuckled. Naruto actually felt calm around her and not nervous. This may be the only medical person he could not freak out by. That is rather interesting and cute. It makes you look like a fox. Not that far off. 
thought the blonde shinobi as he remembered his tenant. I will go see Fuzzy later tonight, wanting to see how the fox was doing. So what is this thing? Well, that's a machine that analyzes your element reserve and compatibility of a person with Macon, Karanbo, said the school nurse. After all, we have many kinds of Macon replicas to match every student's nature. Naruto looked at the machine and then at the nurse. So most of the Macon that are being used are mostly replicas? So are there any that aren't fakes? Before she could respond the machine began to speak. Hurry and put it in, you bastard. Naruto turned to look at the machine with a glare. What did you call me? Said the blonde shinobi in a threatening manner. He may have been called Baka, Dobi, Dead Last, Knucklehead, Demon Child and many other things. But those that dares call him, a bastard. We're punished with no chance of mercy. You heard me. You spiky blonde hair, blue-eyed, retarded bastard. Bet your mom was real disappointed how turned out to be. Said the machine. However, it soon came to regret it. The sight before the small machine made him and the rest of the boys shiver in fear. Naruto lowered his head making it hard to see his eyes and a black aura was covering his entire body. A red orb appeared where his right eye would have been. If the machine could sweat, it would be imitating a waterfall. While all this happened, the nurse felt a little bit of fear, and an odd sensation of arousal. Not many people knew this but she had a thing for young men with a dominant demeanor and by what she can tell this boy fell perfectly under the category of an alpha male. You are going to regret those word. Naruto said in a darker more sinister voice. Soon rammed his right arm all the way into the machine that groaned in pain. And he was a machine so it shouldn't be impossible. Karanbo even do it was in great pain began measure the boy's element reserve along with what Macon was compatible to him. Oh shit! Shouted the machine as it soon blew up. Oh my! said Aki surprised by the sudden destruction of Karanbo. Ha take that you talking toaster, Naruto said with joy. Soon the eyes of the machine glowed a little. Why you have to do be better than that, said the rust bucket while Naruto snarled. Were you able to tell what Macon he was compatible to? Asked the nurse looking at what remained of the machine. And the other males were also interested. But nurse without trying to was very close to the blonde making his shoulder be right between her. Don't fall to arrow side. Don't fall to the arrow side. Don't fall to the arrow side. Was the mantra that Naruto was shouting in his head. Her even do they are big, K cup. They are soft like two marshmallows. He didn't know how much longer he could control his libido and not fall to the perverted side of men. Why yeah. But we might need Minori and Jen to hear this. Karanbo said with absolute seriousness. Principal's office Takaru. Anaho and Naruto sat on a sofa on the left side of the room. While Minori stood in front of her desk and Aki behind the sofa. While a man with spiky orange hair, wearing a white headband and green eyes sat on the other sofa. He also had two scratch marks on the right side of his face and some hair growing from his chin. He had a teal pants, brown shoes, a white undershirt underneath a black jacket. Excuse me. Everyone looked besides the guy on the sofa to look at Haruko entering the room. Haruko Senpei. Harune. You said you can't find a suitable Makan for Take Cha, Erm, Uyama Takaru kun. What's that about? Haruko said. Principal, um, not finding a Makan is, she didn't finish, but the other three staff members understood. Yeah, it's just like that. Impossible, said the man. But this is the truth, said Minori. Even though it's been ten years since I created this element detector, Karenbo is my masterpiece said the man. The principal of Tenbi sighed and looking at the man. According to Aki this was made out of scrap, and Naruto proved it by making it explode. The man looked shocked and turned to look at Aki, who had an apologetic face, and soon focused back to Minori. A genius isn't picky about his material. That's right, I'm a genius. Damn it, shouted the machine. It was now in a smaller version of its previous appearance. It soon began to tremble by Naruto's gaze. Want me to blow you up? And no, smart choice, said Naruto while Minori smiled at the sight of the robot trembling in fear. But why did four people with unidentifiable elements appear this year? Asked the man to himself. Four people, said a surprised Haruko. They told me my element characteristics can't be found either, said Anaho with much innocence. Well, since she already had a Makan to begin with, it's understandable why hers couldn't be found said Minori and soon her head shifted to look outside. 
The other person with unidentifiable characteristics came from that place. The problem is, she said quiet for a minute unable to finish her sentence. Um. Being unable to identify the characteristics of one's element, is that a serious problem? Asked Takaru nervously. It's a great problem. Shouted the man, Minori and Haruko together. Now standing a few inches from Takaru. My pride as a genius, he was unable to finish and had his mouth covered by Minori. You know that the Makan you get to use is determined by your element, right? Yee. But basically, isn't it from now on that I'll be using a Makan? Asked his friend. The problem is that, from now on, the hardest will probably be self-defense, said Minori. Self-defense. Haruko soon explained why. Chinbi Academy's battles are. She recalled a few fights that has occurred around the school. Question. Interrupted the light brown-haired girl. I've been taught that battles can only be carried out if both sides agree to it. Which means that as long as you refuse, there won't be any problem. Why yeah, that's true. I can't bear to fight against girls, said Takaru. Naruto sighed at his friend. Even do he has heart he really need to work on his morals. Since a woman can be as dangerous as a man in a battlefield. Minori soon grabbed Takaru by the nose. Eyes that ism, Takaru. Girls are stronger than you think. Also, there are people using Makan outside of battles. At such a time, the only one who can protect you is yourself. She said and turned to look at Naruto. What about you? What is your opinion in this? Naruto looked at the dark purple-haired woman. From where I come from many of the women I have met are strong fighters. Therefore, to fight a woman in a battlefield for me is the same as fighting a man. We are all equals in an arena we both suffer the taste of defeat or victory. But outside of the field of battle I have a moral code, unless they start it or harm any of those I hold dear. Minori smiled at his response. Is the school really that dangerous? Asked Takaru to his friend. As I thought, you came to this school without knowing anything. The vice president said looking down at the floor. No really? What was your first clue? Thought Naruto as he guessed this on day one. The guy was completely in pervy land and didn't read the fine print. It's alright. I'll protect Takaru-sama. Said Inaho, however didn't see the annoyed look Haruko had on her face. Jen. This guy's Macon will it take along? Asked Minori to the now identified general. Who do you think I am? Just a month will be enough. Now, his eyes moved to Naruto. We speak to the fourth person who's was able to destroy my precious masterpiece. So Karanbo how much element does he have and what is his Macon? To be precise I may have only been able to measure a quarter of his element reserve. This shocked the teachers. To have such a large reserve was unheard of. As for his Macon, it's Aramentaru. Why you're joking are right. Asked General Hopping the machine was pulling his leg. Jen. For once I am not kidding even do I wish I were. The blonde over there is compatible to the most dangerous Macon in the world. And powerful enough that it could match one of the original eight. If the Murakumo was thought to be destructive they haven't witnessed that thing's power. Said the talking toaster. What is this Aramentaru? Asked Naruto curious about this Macon. It sounded powerful and also judging by their faces very deadly. Minori soon began to speak while sitting on her desk. Aramentaru, also known as the Elemental Sword or Nature's Wrath. A Makan that has enough power to match that of the original eight, if not surpass them. No one knows the true origin of the blade or how it was created. Some say that it was created by the Shinto goddess Izanami no Makoto before her death. Others say that it was forged by Ama Sumara who took a fang from each of Orochi's heads and finished it under the night of a full moon. But one thing is clear. That Makan has the power to bring down the force of nature to its enemies. Said Minori as she sighed. In all of Tenbi's history and even before the foundation of our academy. Only two others were compatible to that blade. The last wielder on his deathbed decided to give Aramentaru to us. Only for it to be placed at the shrine at the top of a Manahara waiting for it next wielder to appear. We forbid any students going up to the shrine and take that sword. For it has a defense mechanism of electrifying those who aren't at wielder. That is until now. She looked at the blonde shinobi. For you, Naruto kun are the third wielder of the Aramentaru. Naruto, along with Takaru, Anaho, and Haruka, were shocked. For the Makan sound so powerful, it will need one just as powerful to wield it. The shinobi was trembling in excitement. He was able to gain a trump card to face the Akatsuki, and possibly become Hokage. So, when can we go up to the shrine? 
asked Naruto with a fox-like smile. This caused both Minori and Aki to gain a small blush. Jen looked at Minori and later at Aki and felt depressed. Lucky brat. Shrine on top of Amanahara After leaving the principal's office Naruto followed Jen, Minori and Aki up the steps of Amanahara. Takaru and Anaho stayed behind since they were not allowed unless any member of the school staff granted permission. He was lucky to be a shinobi, for any civilians would be exhausted when they reached the top. There before them was an average shrine with white pillars, white walls and red tile roofing. All right follow us for it is inside, said Minori as Naruto followed. However, he felt some power in the center of the clearing. He didn't know what it was but it felt familiar. Soon Aki, General, Minori and Naruto entered the shrine and saw on the other side of the room was a katana placed on a display stand. The katana's hilt was made of orange braid with white ray skin. Both the guard and pommel has a gold shine similar to gold, but a green gem was visible on the butt cap. The blade was sheeted in a black scabbard with a flame design on its far end, it also has an orange sagio. Under it was a white scroll. Naruto walked up to the sword and grabbed the scroll. He felt like a bit of his chakra was taken into the scroll. The knot holding it let itself go and Naruto began to read the context it held. To the one who was chosen by Aramentaru. If you were reading this then that mean you are the one selected to wield Aramentaru. So I will tell you how to summon the Makan and a tip on how to use, Elemental Shift. To start the bonding with it you must unsheathe Aramentaru, the bond will be both physical and spiritual. Once the bonding is complete Aramentaru will go to its personal pocket dimension that only you have access to. Now to summon Aramentaru you must say, destroy all evil. Aramentaru, to send it back simply say, rest Aramentaru. Now for its, elemental shift, you must first say, awaken blade of, and choose from one of the eight. Kasai, is for fire, Yami, for darkness, Kaze, for wind, Mizu, for water, Raideningu, for lightning, Hikari, for light, Doku, for poison and, Chikyu, for earth. Each have their own unique ability but I won't write this down better to learn this on the field of battle. Best of luck second wielder of Aramentaru, Nagi Arashi. After reading the scroll Naruto rolled it back up and put it in his pocket. He soon lifted Aramentaru by holding it by the scabbard. The blonde felt a light vibration coming upon contact. Using his other hand, he slowly began to unsheathe it. A wave of elements surrounded him as the sword was being drawn and those behind him were trying hard not to be blown away. Outside of the shrines the clouds began to be pushed away creating a perfect circle around the city showing the vast blue sky. Many of the animals outside stopped when they felt the surge of element energy, to them it was calming like they were in the embrace of their mother. While those who have Makan were trying to figure out where this was coming from. Naruto soon fully unsheathed the sword and a stunning silver blade was right in front of him. He pointed the blade forward to see engravings on the circular guard of the katana the kanji for fire, huo, water, shui, wind, feng, earth, tu, lightning, lei, light, guang, darkness, and, and poison, do, going in a circular motion. Wanting to test the sword out he did a quick down slash, he could hear the air being cut by the blade. He later did an upward slash, side slash, diagonal slash and a thrust as if impaling an enemy. He wanted to try, elemental shift, but would decide to do it another day. So he began to sheath the blade back into its scabbard. The blade once fully sheathed disappeared in a gray light. Like it was never there. Okay that was pretty cool. Nice display Naru-kun. Said Minori looking at the blonde interdimensional shinobi. She was amazed by the amount of power that Naruto has at his disposal. It was going to be interesting watching the boy grow. Aki nodded in agreement with the school's principal. Impressive. I never felt such large amount of element being emitted like that before. Said Jen as he thought of the Aramentaru. That Makan like the original eight are in the best form to describe, perfect. None of the replica Makan could come close to those created by the Kamis. Even do it's a large pill to swallow it is true. Naruto rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. He wasn't used to being praised by people. The blonde soon calms down and looks at Minori. Well I'm ready to meet my fellow comrades of Makan Ki, Mino Chan. Alright. Well follow me. You will be part of the Kenkibu. Also Aki over here is their staff advisor of Makan Ki. Said Minori pointing at the school nurse. Naruto turned to look at Aki and doing the Namikaze smile. It will be a pleasure working with you Aki-chan. Like all women who see the smile he and his dad possess. 
Her feet became a bit weak and her face has gained a small visible blush. H hi same tea to you and Narukun. Minori turned to look at Aki who was blushing, and stuttering. Oh hell no. You will not get him. Thought the busty principal. Even do Naruto was a student of the school he was better than most men she knew. And also all males always focused on Aki for having larger than her. She will not lose a boy who find her attractive. Aki looked at her purple-haired friend and noticed the small glare. She figured that she liked the blonde boy by how she allows him to call her, Mino-chan. Nevertheless, even if she was not a physical combatant like her she will not lose. You haven't placed claims, Minori. So he is fair game. The two men looked at the two women with hint of fear as they were both covered in a greenish aura and sparks were appearing in the center of the two busty women. Behind Minori was an orange tiger with red eyes, while Aki had a blue dragon with brown eyes. General, yeah. Remind me to never piss them off, said Naruto at the Macon blacksmith. The two women before him may be beautiful and he liked strong women, but they have feminine fury that could make men shit their pants and cry for their mommies. Deal. As long as you do the same for me, said the man as Naruto nodded at the agreement. Later Mino-chan, Aki-chan. I have school tomorrow, sweet dreams, the blonde said as he disappeared in a shunshun, leaving poor general behind. After obtaining Aramentaru, Naruto headed home. He soon went into his mindscape to talk to the Kyubi. However, he wasn't expecting it to be so pleasant. Flashback Naruto soon appears in his mindscape. It still looked like a sewer with tubes representing his chakra system. He followed it all the way towards the source. There before him was a giant metal bars and a seal in the center. He looked behind it to see the giant nine tailed fox sleeping. Hey, Kyubi. The boy said awakening the fox from his slumber. Hello kid. Why are you here? Asked the fox. Naruto stayed quiet for a moment collecting what he was going to say. I wanted to talk. Talk. Yeah. Naruto said as he sat in a lotus position in the water. You see we are currently not in the elemental nation. We are in an entirely new world and maybe for a while out of the Akatsuki's grasp. I may not like you and I bet the feeling is mutual. Getting a nod from the fox but I want to try to get along with you. Settle our differences and work together. To stop them from completing their plans. The fox stared at Naruto and checking for any negative emotion. He felt none of that. True I detest you and your kind for sealing away me and my siblings. Said the fox. However, I can see that you are different. I had seen your memories. You have gone through hell and continued to stay sane, while any weaker men would have been crushed by going a single day in your shoes. And even do I dislike you, I dislike that orange masked freak even more. For now, I will work with you. The Kiyubi said making Naruto do a fist pump. But if you so much as betray me, and begin to see me like some sort of slave. One of his nails shot out of the bar and was a few inches from Naruto's eyes. I will not hesitate to kill you. Naruto smirked at the powerful beast and moved its nail out of the way. Don't worry I won't betray your trust. That is a promise of a lifetime he said with a smile on his face. The beast looked at the boy as a ghostly image appeared beside him. The figure had short, spiky brown hair, two locks of which were wrapped in bandages framing either side of his face in a similar manner to his brother. He possessed stern facial features. In his later years, he had a more pronounced jawline and short goatee similar to his father. He wore what seemed to be a blank forehead protector and at a later time, bandages around his forehead. He wore a light-colored kimono with magatama adorned around the collar. The kimono was held closed by a dark-colored sash. He was doing the same smile as the boy. He really is your reincarnation, Asura. Flashback N. After that the Kiyubi has become more open with him. The fox also told him about his mother, Kashina Uzumaki. The boy was glad to know more about his mother, and was glad to be similar to her in some way. Kiyubi also unlocked the ability of his mother the adamantine sealing chains that it believed to be useful against Madara and Makan users. The fox also told him that due to the bonding with Aramentaru he was able to gain the affinity for fire, water, earth and lightning. Along with a keke Jenke for light, darkness and poison. But they are all mid-rank affinity, but while wielding Aramentaru they become god-rank affinity. So the biju decided to become his trainer, and since it traveled around the elemental nation before his sealing. He knew a lot of things that can be useful to increase his arsenal. Naruto woke up a few hours earlier since he wanted to train a little with his Makan in its elemental shift ability. 
Kiyubi has witnessed a few sword fights when he was still free, so he though him basic swords movements that will become the foundation for his future sword style. That however is the only problem they had come across. They needed a style that was fast, unpredictable and able to take down or knock out enemies in a single move. After his sword training he headed home to prepare himself for the day. Better eat breakfast, wait today I get my uniform, shouted the boy as he rushed to his floor level to find a box with his name on it. He swiftly entered his designated room and opened the box to reveal its contents. Yes. Time to really shine, he smiled at his new clothing. Tenbi Academy Naruto has arrived and all eyes were on him. The females wear blushing and the males drop their heads in depression. Naruto school attire was a long blue blazer with the sleeves rolled up to his forearms, white shirt, orange tie with a green line, blue pants and brown shoes. On his forehead was a black headband with an orange spiral on it. Man I like this new look. Naruto soon spots Haruko, Takaru and Anaho in front of him. Hey guys. The three turn to look at Naruto. Hey Naruto, is that your uniform? Yep I asked Mino-chan if I could have a few modifications. So what are you guys talking about? Asked the curious blonde. I am asking Haruko about Kenkibu. Oh so you are joining too? Said Naruto. Haruko turned around to look at the blonde. Wait you are joining? Naruto nodded. Yep one of the things that Minori-chan requested of me when I joined the school. I would have joined it either was since it sounds like something I would be good at. But I wasn't told much about it. Haruko smiled in joy at hearing two of her friends joining. All right. Then let me, the student council vice president, tell you two in detail. In a moment, she pulls out a pair of brown glasses, a pointer stick and a TV. Seriously where do people pull things like this out of nowhere? Thought the blonde. Your guess is as good as mine. Your race is a mystery to me. In Tenbi Academy there is a group of people representing the students, namely the student council. Showing the image of Furin and Haruko in their respected positions. All kinds of troublesome incidents are reported in the school. Taking care of those is the responsibility of Madu Shikobu and an instructor from year one and up, she said while wagging the pointer back and forth. Additionally, to support the Shikobu, there is the Kenkibu. Haruko tapped the screen. Are you listening? Why yes, said Inaho and Takaru trying to process the information. Naruto nodded as he was fully into it. Hey he is a child soldier. These sort of thing is natural for someone like him. Even though we haven't had the chance to be in action lately, now that the school became co-ed, it's likely that there will be more trouble. Haruko soon did a light cough and removed the glasses. That's why with me, Amaya Haruko, as club president, we'll be really active again. In other words, the peace in Tenbi Academy from today onward will depend on our efforts. To allow every student to live a bright and happy school life, the Kenkibu gives its best every day. That's it explanation over. Takaru and Anaho both looked like their brain has been friend and thrown into a blender. While Naruto felt more motivated than ever, he will be able to fight and also keep the peace. That's killing two birds with one stone. Understood. Said the purplelet. I understand perfectly, shouted a familiar voice. Soon the same boy that went with Takaru on their peeping appeared. You're the student council's vice president Amaya Haruko, right? I'm first year student Usui Kengo, he said with a glint in his smile. Nice to meet you, the now identified Usui said extending his hand. Takaru recalling who the guy was went over to block the guy from doing anything indecent, but it only lead to him groping her left. Oh boy, thought Naruto feeling the anger coming from the girl, but he hears Kiyubi laughing at the boy's action. To jump and protect her the girl only to become the assailant, it was comedy gold. What do you mean, be careful, said Haruko as her anger began to be noticed. Ah, no, Haruko senpei, said an unknown female who gave Takaru a good punch to his right cheek. Let's go. I'll beat down the pervert. This came from a girl with light green eyes and short light magenta hair with a short ponytail held by a pink ribbon. She was wearing Tenbi Academy female clothing with a green scarf. Meaning she was a first year like the others minus Haruko. You're misunderstanding. Minayo san. That was an accident. An accident, said the vice president trying to calm down the now known Minayo. Even if it was an accident, he partially enjoyed it. Naruto thought to himself, the Kiyubi nodding in agreement. An accident? Uyama Takaru san is a childhood friend of mine and he's a first year student, just like you, said Haruko. 
a childhood friend of Haruko Senpei, Minayo said, but Naruto saw a glint in her eyes meaning she was planning something and walked up to Takaru. Nice to meet you. I'm Minaya Yuruchi. I like pasta and Haruko Senpei. The girl soon applied pressure on his hand. I hate roaches and idiots who wear glasses. Let's get along. And nice to meet you. The blonde looked the whole thing and raised one of his eyebrows. Is she a bit too protective of Haruko san? Also, why do I sense such negative emotions coming from her? It appears you got my ability to sense negative emotions. Since we have decided to be partners, that ability is given to my Jinchuriki. Hum, useful ability. I will test it here in Tenbi as a way for training, thought Naruto as he soon focused back at the conversation. Manaya san was a kohai of mine when I was in middle school. She's a very nice person. You should get along with her, Takaru san. Haruko said oblivious to the negative emotion coming out of the girl. Yeah, not anytime soon. Thought the bond shinobi feeling bad for Takaru. Who is the blonde? Asked Manaya. He is my new friend, Uzumaki Naruto. Also a first year student. Haruko said introducing him to her kohai. Nice to meet you. She said shaking his hand and applying the same strength she did with Takaru. However, Naruto was able to counteract by applying his own strength while keeping a straight face. Nice to meet you too Manaya-san. I am Uzumaki Naruto. I like ramen, the color orange, my friends, training and cooking. I dislike vegetable, anyone who mocks orange, those who threaten and hurt my friends and perverts. When he said the last part, she lessened her grip and so did he. Really? You hate perverts, but you are a guy. Most of them are perverts or jerks, said a surprised girl. Well I am not most guys. In addition, I had two perverted teachers and I swore to never to become like them. Also I prefer fighting jerks than being one," said Naruto gaining a few respect points from Manaya. You're not so bad. Same to you, he said with a smile, but I will keep you on a leash. Takaru may be a pervert but he doesn't deserve constant physical abuse. Only when he really deserves it. Oh I almost forgot, Haruka Senpei there is a fight occurring at the schoolyard, the girl told her Senpei. A battle at the schoolyard? asked Haruko. Yes, please come quickly, said Manaya. Everyone soon followed the petite girl to the schoolyard. Tenbi schoolyard there in the schoolyard was Azuki who was getting ready to fight. In front of her was a tall, muscular freshman, with brown hair and a signature visor, hat. Are you sure? If I win, you'll become my lover, the guy said finishing with a blush on his face. Yeah. But if I win, you have to promise you won't pester me anymore," Azuki said adjusting her glove. Azuki-san, it's you again," said Haruko as if this was a normal thing. The red-haired girl turned to look at her. Ha, Vice President, you're late. What is it about this time?" asked the Vice President of the Student Council. A senpei is responsible for taking care of stupid younger students," she said turning to look at the guy. Eh? That guy is, said Usui getting the attention of both Naruto and Takaru. However, Naruto felt that that was coming from the guy. It was sickening. Do you know him? Kuragasa Kai. A hardcore guy that you don't see nowadays. Even though he's almost 16, he has never had a girlfriend, said Usui. Sound familiar. Shut up Baka Kitsune, said Naruto annoyed since he was on the same boat. He was single for 16 years all because he never continuously pursued Sakura. Kiyubi laughs at his tenant annoyance. Why do you know such trivial stuff? Goodness, fighting for such a reason. Himagami said as she soon appears. Well being able to express your love straightforwardly is way better than some peeping trash. Two imaginary arrows hit Takaru and Usui in the heart. Naruto snickered at the truth that has been spoken. Then let me start the battle ritual. Said Himagami standing in the center. The two flows opposing each other. The path of two crosses here. To open one's own path. To confirm one's true purpose. One soul shall be sworn to live with Tenbi. The path of the sun, shouted Azuki and Kai in unison. Shall be imprinted in the sky. What is the matter with you? You're not even taking a stance. Said Kai seeing the violet-eyed girl standing straight. Naruto knew that she was a strong fighter and can start a fight without the need of taking a stance. After all, he did witness her fight with Garrett the other day. As if I'd need to get serious against a new student, she said arrogantly, I'll be fine without a Macon, come here. That choice is going to cost her, 
thought the blonde-haired shinobi. To underestimate an opponent is risky and they can use this to their advantage. After all, he defeated many people for underestimating him because of his rank of genin. Humph. Being arrogant is also part of your charm. But you'll regret that. The guy said as he charged towards the girl. Azuki dodged his grab by jumping over his. Getting a chance to kick him in the face with her right leg. However, the sound of metal being hit was heard. It's hard. Said Azuki wincing in slight pain. This is my Makin, hard and tenacious, Makin steel full metal. Said Kai as a light hexagon shape appeared on the left side of his face. The tall teen soon did a downward punch ripping her shirt and exposing her bra, which were white with green stripes. All of the men celebrated at the sight of her underwear. But were silenced when Naruto released killing intent. If there is one thing, he hates its men who act perversely when a woman has their clothing torn. Nevertheless, he blushed a little at the sight too. He didn't fully show it like his fellow male classmates. Referee. Change of conditions, if I win he'll cover the cost for my uniform. And my underwear as well. Said a now annoyed Azuki. I don't mind. Said Kai. With confidence in his voice. Change approved. Said Himagami agreeing to the change of conditions. Naruto stayed in his spot watching the fight. But he took a small glance towards Takaru. He saw his face disapproving of what is occurring before them. What's wrong, Takaru? You look so serious, said Usui bringing him out of his thought. Don't you feel anything, said Takaru confusing Usui. A guy is beating on a girl. It's all right. All eyes went to Haruko, minus Naruto who continued to watch and Kodama who was the referee. Azuki sans strong and girls are much, much more powerful than you imagine. Or, are you saying you don't like the fact that a girl is fighting? Said Himagami putting in her own thought. Turning to look at Takaru. While that was happening, Naruto has come up with the full ability of Kai's Makin. By what I am seeing his Makin is not only has a strong defense but also increases his strength, however the only disadvantage he has is speed. His eyes soon looked at Azuki who counter each of Kai's attacks. Even do she's able to counter the guy. She might not last much longer. What's wrong? Is that it? Shouted Kai as he continued to throw barrages of fists. Until he punches the ground. The brute pushed back his fist and drawing a few shards from the ground and launching them at Azuki at a fast speed. As thought it's bad. Saint, was all Takaru said as Naruto chopped him in the back of his neck. Takaru-san, Sama, Haruko and Anaho rushed at the now unconscious boy. Haruko looked at Naruto. Why did you do that? Because the idiot was going to jump into the fight. Harming himself forgetting that he doesn't have a Makin. He let his personal morals cloud his judgment and act without thinking of the consequence. Said Naruto as his eyes did not leave the fight before him. My foot, said Azuki with him being the only one to hear it. However, an opening. Shouted Kai as he was going to deliver the final punch to Azuki. It doesn't mean I can. In a burst of speed which neither Himagami and Haruko could follow Naruto vanished. Destroy all evil. Aramentaru. His Makin appeared in his left hand from a grey light. Soon using the scabbard to block the incoming attack. The sudden impact made a strong gust of air creating a cloud of dust. What the? Said Kai as he looked down to see his fist stopped by Naruto's Makin. That's enough. Naruto soon pushes Kai's fist away. And hit him in the gut with the pommel sending a few feet away from him. Hey what do you think you are doing? Shouted the Azuki in annoyance. You shouldn't be interfering. This match is between me and him. I don't need some guy protecting me like some damsel in distress. I know. So back off. Moreover, do not interrupt my fight. Shouted Azuki in anger. He thinks I'm weak and fragile like all the other men. I will show him that I am as strong as any guy. Thought the redhead. But it's not a fair fight. You have a sprained ankle. This was caused by the kick you did to him when the match began. Kai played with your arrogance and used being a new student status to his advantage. Most likely heard it from some of the second year girls. By doing that it allowed him to make a trap, with the result making him the victor without you truly trying. Said Naruto to her and making her realize her rookie mistake. Even Kai gave a hint of about her arrogance, but she simply thought it was to sway her. Beside I don't think you want to be that guy's girlfriend. Naruto stabbed Aramentaru one moment to the ground while removing his blazer and handing it to Azuki. Here use this to cover yourself. I don't think you want any guy to get a free show. 
he said while not turning around out of respect and to keep an eye on Kai. Many of the girls who had a boyfriend wished there did something like that to them at some point in their life. Azuki felt appreciated for his action. This boy, no man jumped in for her. Not about the fight was between a boy and a girl or having an ulterior motive. But because he was just being a kind person who cared for others. Thanks, she said taking the blazer and putting it on. It felt comforting and warm having his blazer on for some reason. Referee. I want to make, she turned to look at the guy. Naruto. The girl nodded and looked at the referee. Naruto, be the one to represent me in this fight, said Azuki. I agree said Kai with annoyance visible in his voice. His chance to get Azuki was ruined and now he was going to vent his anger on him. The twin-tailed referee nodded to the swap of opponent. Azuki turned to him and giving him a glare. I am putting my fate in your hands, so you better win. Or else I beat your ass when this is over. Naruto smiled as he removed Aramentaru from the ground. Don't worry. I plan on winning this fight. Play, Bring on the Thunder, by Ariz, ready. The two males nodded. Fight! Himagami shouted as Naruto rushed at a genin speed. Kai threw a punch hopping to hit Naruto in the face. However, the boy moved to the side and hits Kai in the stomach with his scabbard in a bat-like motion. And pushing back a few inches. What? Thought the tall male as he felt the hit. How was able to hit through my makin? He was unable to think as the blonde once more came at him. He crossed his arm going on the defense. Naruto hit him multiple times with his scabbard, hitting him in the forearms, shoulders, sides, wrists and elbows. The only reason that Kai was even flinching was that the scabbard was coated with his chakra, hardening it and making it stronger than any known metal. Basic chakra flow technique, got to love it. Kai had enough and did a straight punch aimed to his chest, but he jumped back avoiding the attack. Curious question Kai. Why do you even want Azuki? What is it about her that you want to fight her to be your girlfriend? Asked Naruto as he used Aramentaru as a cane placing both his hands on the pommel. Why not? She is hot. Said Kai as if the most obvious thing. That's it. Just because of her outer beauty. Do you even know what she likes, dislikes, dreams, hobbies? Something that makes her unique? Asked Naruto as he suppressed his anger. Azuki however listened to the blonde haired teen in front of her. To her he was an anomaly since his behavior is different from the other males she has encountered. It was, refreshing to see a male acting different from the rest. Who cares about that? All that matter is the looks. Naruto lowered his head as he brought his makin to eye level. You know I was not planning on drawing my makin. But now, he placed his other hand on the hilt. Slowly drawing the blade as a massive surge of element began to emit from him. You will be the first to face its wrath. Fully unsheathing his makin, while the scabbard disintegrated into particle of gray light. Awaken blade of lightning. Ratoningu. Shouted Naruto as the blade soon was turned pure yellow and arcs of lightning began to surge from it. Kaya looked at the blade nervously but soon his bravado returned covering it. You think some little lightning can beat me? I don't think. Naruto soon disappeared in a bolt of bolt of lightning to appear behind Kai. During his training with Aramentaru. He noticed that he could use two abilities on instinct. They are the ability to summon and control the element and teleportation using the element. I know. As Naruto did, a downward slash aimed towards the teen's shoulder. Kai was able to turn around and blocked it. However, the brute did not expect to be hit by 50,000 volts of electricity. The blonde shinobi continued making a barrage of slashes. Each time they were blocked small cuts appeared on the brute and volt of lightning coursed through his body numbing his nerves. The students on the sidelines watched the battle with outmost wonder. The movement of Naruto's blade and the way the lighting followed was like a dangerous dance. Haruko was surprised on how Naruto has adapted to his makin. Anaho along with Manaya were cheering for Naruto to beat the guy up. Himagami on the other hand was more interested on the makin in his hand. It had an odd sensation of familiarity even if she has never seen it before in her life. You little shit! shouted the Kai as he drove a punch aimed to Naruto's head. When it hits the blonde he was soon covered in smoke and a shattered log appeared. Naruto appearing a few feet away. Let's finish it. Naruto raised his free hand and created a light blue orb with a light green hue that soon had lightning dancing around it. Have a nice flight. He shouted as he rushed now stood next to Kai with the sphere heading towards the teen's stomach. Raiden. Rasengan. 
Overconfident of his make and Kai let, the attack hit him. That was a horrible choice of action. When the sphere made contact, it launched the muscle-bound teen to the other side of the yard. When he reached the edge of the field, the sphere soon expanded and covered the teen in a ball of lightning, making everyone cover his or her eyes by the bright light. When the light faded, they all saw Kai on the floor unconscious. He had a few burns on his skins and a spiral mark on his stomach. Good thing I decided to use it on low power. I would hate to get in trouble for killing the guy. Thought the blonde shinobi as he stood up. Song end, winner Naruto. Announced the lowly second year. As Anaho cheered for her friend. The bell began to ring announcing everyone to head to class. Naruto soon summons the scabbard of his Makan and sheathed it. Rest Aramentaru. He said in a calm voice as his Makan disappeared once more. The blonde soon turns to look at the violet-eyed girl and giving her a fox-like smile. See I told you I will win. Azuki stared at the blonde-haired teen as a very light blush appeared on her cheeks. Yeah, you did. Oh I guess I should give this back. Azuki said going to hand him his blazer. However, he raised his hand stopping her action. Hold on to it until you get another shirt. You can give it to me later. Said Naruto. Azuki nodded as she adjusted the blazer. That was quite amazing. The two teens turned to look at Haruko. Even do you recently gain your Makan? You were able to use it fairly well. Naruto scratched the back of his head in embarrassment. He was not one for praises, especially if done by a girl. Thank for the compliment Haruko-san. That was awesome. Shouted Anaho as a now awake Takaru rubbed his neck. You were all like Swish, and Whoosh, and Pow. It was awesome, said the light brown haired girl. Naruto smiled and patted her head. I sure was wasn't I. He said getting a nod from the cat smile girl. Hallway. So why are you following us? Asked Takaru to Usui. Who were following Haruko to the Kenkibu HQ. After telling what occurred during the battle. Takaru decided to join Kenkibu. He has seen that girls are strong. But wants the fight to be fair. To Naruto this was a good sign of progress. The boy will go far if he fight for what is right. Naturally, it's to join the Kenkibu. Since Himagami Senpei is a member too, the only club I'll join is this one, said Usui looking at the door to their new club room. To ensure that Tenbi Academy's battles are fair. For that I'm going to join the Kenkibu. Takaru said having a serious expression. He soon felt someone place a hand on his shoulder to see it belonged to a certain blue-eyed shinobi. And we will, all of us. Together, said Naruto supporting Takaru with his goal. Haruko and Anaho nodded in agreement to also help him. The shinobi soon knocked on the door to the clubroom. Excuse me. I'm a first year student, Uzumaki Naruto, said Naruto. Era. I'm surprised that we have four new members this year, said a short purple haired girl with hair antenna and bang on the side, her eyes were shut and doing a similar eye smile that Kakashi does to change the subject. She had purple color in her uniform, meaning the sign of a third year student. Behind her furin who looked nervous. I'm glad that it'll become lively from now on. W welcome. Furin said in a shy manner. Naruto found this cute. Now then, to deepen the bonds of our new members, even though it's a little sudden, we'll hold an exchange meeting. Said the purple haired girl in a joyful manner. The self introduction of the members will take place there. Let's get along. Amanahara Hot Spring Naruto, Takaru and Usui were the first to enter the hot spring. While Usui and Takaru had black swim trunks, Naruto had an orange trunk with black flame pattern. Wow, this is truly great, said Usui. I haven't been to a hot spring in a long time. It will feel nice relax in one again, said the blonde stretching a little. Yeah, not only is it large, but the decoration is stylish as well. For such a place to exist at the foot of the spirit mountain Amanahara, unbelievable, said Takaru looking at the place before him. But why are new members of the Kenkibu welcomed at a hot spring? Who know? said Usui. Judging by his grin recalling the memory of the I Smile Girl. But isn't it fine? This time we can enjoy the girls in swimsuits without the need of a pretext. Usui said in a sagely way. True. said Takaru. My comrade. Yo. said the two guys as they hit the back of their palm. Asterisk sigh why is it that Eevee time I become friends to a guy, they turn out to be perverts? asked Naruto to himself. But aren't you also exited? We get to see different girls in bathing suits, protested Usui. Yeah that is true. 
But I am not someone who think with their second head or hormones. I can admire a girl beauty yes, but I don't undress them with my eyes like you. Naruto said making Usui gain a bit of flames in his eyes. I bet you are a pervert, but prefer to hide it out of shame. Whatever lets you sleep at night. Naruto shrugged. The door behind them soon opened. Sorry to make you wait, said Anaho getting their attention. She was wearing a pink bathing suit with pink skirt bottom. Ah, what a wide bath. Beside her was Azuki who had a blue bikini with red outline. The view here is very nice as well. Her eyes soon spotted Naruto and blushed. His body was well developed, not overly muscular or slender, but a perfect enough to match that of a swimmer. A well chiseled chest and a six pack that was present. Wow he looks good. Wait did I just, oh by Kami's sake. I only met him for maybe a few minutes and I got a crush on him. Even do in that few minutes he proved to be better than any other male. She thought while also taking mental pictures of him for future use. Next came a silver hair girl with a ponytail and two bangs with a darker toned skin. She was wearing a cheetah print styled bikini. Japan is beautiful. She said and looked at Naruto with a little bit of drool coming out of her mouth and hearts in her eyes. Oh hello handsome. Yeah, really. Said the two hormonal teenage boys with a very joyful expression. That is until Naruto hit them on the head to bring them back to reality. Down boys. Well at least one of you know how to behave. The three males turned to look at Kodama who had a black elegant one-piece swimsuit, her hair was down which reached her waist. The other two's filthy eyeballs are glowing without a reason. Do you want me to clean them a little? She said as sparks of lighting emitted from her fingers. We didn't look. Shouted the perverted duo. I call bullshit. Thought the blonde shinobi. Agreed. Said the Kiyubi. Haruko soon appeared with a white bikini with purple straps. Behind her was a short black haired girl with a bang covering her left eye wearing a black one piece swimsuit. The petite girl's light purple eyes soon sees Naruto. She gains a noticeable blush on her face. W wow. Seriously, don't stare at me, said Haruko to Takaru. Why yes. Why you too? All eyes turned towards Furin, who was blushing and looking nervous. She had a blue and red striped bikini. She also let her hair down and kept the bun. The girl beside her who introduced them in the Kenkibu room opened her eyes revealing them to be brown. And wearing a plaid bikini with yellow, green and white lines. How shameless. Takaru and Usui thought about it before looking down at their trunks. Noticing how they were having a dent in their swim trunks. The two laughed nervously before being hit in the head by wooden buckets and sent into the water. That's why I said that I didn't want to enter the bath with boys. Furin shouted expressing her dislike of what she saw. Yuka soon responded to her friend's cry. Calm down, this is an exchange meeting we're holding to deepen the bonds with our new members. Furin calms down and soon looked at Naruto. And how are you not like them? Simple, I have stronger control over my libido than Perv 1 and Perv 2. Also I am more well-mannered, Furin Chan. Said Naruto getting a very, very faint blush from Furin. A at least there is some decent men in the world, she said. However she was wondering why his word made her feel so, safe. Now then, although it's a little bold, I, the bookkeeper of the student council, Amado Yuka, will introduce the student council along with the Madu Shikobu and Kenkibu members, said Yuka. So she is sensei's little sister. Thought Naruto now seeing the similarities physical tics, such as their eye smile and putting their hands together. First off, this is our student council's president Takaki Furin san Yuka pointed out towards Furin. Nice to meet you, she said adjusting her glasses. The vice president, Amaya Haruko-san, now introducing Haruko. Nice to meet you for. The secretary, Sato Kimi-san. Introducing a girl who was hiding behind a manga book. Pleased to meet you, she said in a low voice. Soon hiding her face from showing the blush, she gained when looking at Naruto. The Madu Shikobi's Manaya Yuruchi-san. Pointing at the girl from this morning. Nice to meet you, Uyama Takaru san, Uzumaki Naruto san, she said with a forced smile towards Takaru and genuine one for Naruto. In the same club, second year student, Shinatsu Azuki san, now introducing Azuki. I'll be sure to train you properly, she said doing a wink. Naruto finding her pose rather attracting. A second year member of the Kenkibu, Akaza Cha Cha san, now giving the name to the silver-haired girl. Pleasure to meet you, 
she said with a smile, and hope to get to know you even more Whisker Kun, she thought to herself. The same, Himagami Kodama san. Introducing the blonde lowly, but all they got was a very Uchiha like, HN, response. The Kenkibu new members, she said as a way for them to introduce themselves. Yes, I'm a first year, Kushia Anaho, said the exited light colored brunette. Nice to meet you. Soon bringing up her hands and doing paw like motion. I, I'm a first year, Uyama Takaru, he said nervously. L, let's get along. Also a first year, I'm Usui Kengo. Soon doing a good guy pose. Let's get along from now on. First year as well, Uzumaki Naruto. He did a fox like smile. Nice to meet you all. He did not notice how Izuki, Cha Cha, Kimi, and a furin, if only a little blushing. Finally, the advising teacher this year will be. Soon a familiar female appeared wearing a very exotic white swimsuit that could expose her nipples by one wrong movement. By Kami. Naruto blushed at the sight before him, while suppressing his full urges that were rising. I'm Nijo Aki, nice to meet everyone, she said with a smile. Now I can get the upper hand against Minori. Thought the woman as her eyes soon looked at Naruto. And like the other four girls blushed at the sight, he defiantly fell in the category of Adonis. Oh I'm going to enjoy this. Takaru and Usui were radiating that could possibly blow up a planet. As Naruto was going to do something about it, Haruko grabbed Takaru's ear pulling him out of dreamland. In addition, making Usui calm down out of fear. Everyone, please think of us from the student council, Madu Shikobu and Kenkibu as part of the Madu Kenke Kiko. Although our functions are not entirely the same, from a personal viewpoint we are all partners. With that said, Yuka said, Soon Cha Cha brought a large red shuriken and threw it towards a golden ball but it missed. The blade went up into the air and was heading towards Takaru, Usui and Naruto. The first two saw it coming and jumped into the water. Naruto. Get out of the way, shouted the girls. The four girls that were interested in the blonde teen being the loudest. Naruto saw the shuriken and before it hit him, he stepped back and caught it by the center. Got to love being a shinobi. Not wasting any time. He soon did a curve throw for the shuriken at the ball that Cha Cha missed, showing a sign of, welcome, new club members. Wow. That was so cool, shouted the now exited Cha Cha, Anaho and Kimi. Naruto a smug like grin. It was nothing. Soon everyone began to relax on the hot spring. However unlike Takaru and Usui who were on the other side of the hot spring, the girls felt comfortable with Naruto being on their side. Furin, Yuka and Kimi were in a group. Anaho along with Haruko and Minaya had a bit of their leg in the water. Azuki relaxing in the warm water. Chacha was meditating under the waterfall. Aki was sitting a few inches beside Naruto who was relaxing. He began to snicker at Himagami harassing Haruko for wearing pads under her bikini top. Aki sensei. Asked Kimi who got the attention of the busty teacher. Although Haru chan's and Chacha's aren't small, yours are really big, Aki sensei. Can I touch them? Naruto gulped, closed his eyes and took slow breaths to calm his heart rate, going into a meditative state to relax. As he meditated, he felt the concentration of nature energy being quite vast and potent, making him wonder how long it will take to enter, sage mode. Yeah I don't mind. Then I won't hold back, said Kimi. He soon opens his eyes to see the petite girl massaging Aki's from behind. Naruto unable to move his head watched as the small hands moved around and press against the K-cup. The school nurse soon moaned and took a moment to look at Naruto who was staring at her. She blushed as the boy who she has interest on watched her being fondled with. It was also making her be more aroused. Do you want to join in Naruto? Aki said in a driven haze. Causing the girls to look at the older female in shock and surprise. The two other boys to scream in envy and cursing life for being unfair and a poor Naruto to become a perfect representation of a ripe tomato. Uh, 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 was all he could say as Aki soon pressed her against his chest, making it hard for him to calm down and think straight. I don't mind if you want to touch Na, Ru, Tu, Kun, she said with a very seductive smile. Hold it. All of the girls turned to look at the principal appearing and wearing an orange exotic cheeky bikini. Step away from the hunk, shouted Minori in authority. Why should I? pouted Aki who now hugged Naruto in defiance. Naruto was now had his eyes the size of dinner plates since his principal was wearing a very attracting orange bikini. 
Minori jumped into the hot spring and now stood on the behind Naruto and pressing her against him. The boy now creating a new shade of red one even brighter. Because I saw him first, she said with a smugly smile. That is so not fair. Shouted Cha Cha who also joined in by pressing her against his head. You two met him first because of your role as principal and nurse. We have only recently met. I won't lose to either of you, she said pressing him deep into her bust. You are a thousand years too early to go against me little girl, said Minori pulling Naruto out of Cha Cha's grasp and putting him into her. And you two are a few cups too small to face me, Aki said doing the same thing as the other two. Soon all three glared at each other while Naruto had his head surrounded by three different sizes. Kami if you can hear me do me a solid. Help me. Thought the blonde as he was losing air and his will power. He did not want to die in a three-way hug to the face. Even do it would be the best way to die. A bear. Shouted Usui and Takaru as all eyes soon turned to look at the their direction. Getting the attention of everyone, while a blonde male took deep greedy breaths of air. Fern along with Yuka was the first to head over. There, pointed Takaru at the brown bear with a white crescent on its chest. That's a moon bear. And it's a big one, too. Said Fern crossing her arms in front of her chest. Isn't that a panda? Asked Yuka. If we pour water on it, it'll surely turn back into a human. Said Cha Cha with Kimmy walking behind her. There may be a wet beautiful girl or a black pig close by. Said the petite girl. And why would they be with a bear? Thought a confused Naruto, not knowing what they are talking about. It doesn't seem like a big deal. Said Usui. Naruto can sense that the bear is angry, but it felt like a forced one. Not wasting time he began to gather nature energy. He felt it already reaching the quarter mark. Wow that is fast. This will be useful for future fights. Anyway, now that we've clarified the source of the trouble, let's fight it. Said Furin now with her crossed hands under her. Yes, do we capture it or beat it unconscious? Asked Haruko who brought out her shinai. Absolutely not said an annoyed Azuki and Kodama, getting sweat drop from Haruko. Can't you think of anything else other than using force? Himagami said annoyed. Yeah, it's a bear. A bear. Azuki said, if you add a teddy before it, it'll be extremely powerful. So she likes bears, specifically teddy bears. Good to know. Thought Naruto storing this information for future use. What do you want me Toto then? Asked a cornered Haruko. For now, Cha Cha said getting the attention of the three. As she pulls a wooden plank from the fence. Just driving it away without hurting it will be fine. But, even if it's rash, we need to deal with it somehow. Said the girl now staring at the two protesters. Right, President? Yeah, that's the Macon Key. Said Furin. Macon Key? Asked a confused Takaru. Right. Said Haruko bringing her Shania up. Macon Key. Naruto soon was full of nature energy and thought of a better way to solve it. Well I will go with plan C, getting the attention of everyone as he soon walked forward. As the bear soon rushed towards him. Letting the nature chakra course through his body his eyes became frog-like and orange pigmentation around his eyes. Naruto raised his hand and released a small wave of nature energy. The bear felt the soothing energy coursing wrapping it in a warm embrace. The beast quickly came to a stop right in front of Naruto and sat on his hind legs. The blonde sage soon began to pet the bear and closing its eyes liking the sensation. Who's a good bear? The beast gave a short roar as if saying, I am, with a smile on its face. To everyone behind him looked amazed, shocked or adoring the sight of the cute tamed bear. Kawaii, shouted Kodama, Anaho, Kimi and Azuki at the sight. You're just a big softy aren't you? said the young sage getting a low rumble from the bear. Okay run along big guy. And don't attack people or they might not be as nice as I am. Said the sage getting a roar from the bear. And then leaving back to the wilderness. Naruto soon released the nature chakra and turned to look at everyone. He was soon glomped by Cha Cha. That was so manly. The way you stood against the bear and taming it, it was amazing, said the sylvet. Naruto chuckled nervously suppressing the urges that were growing. Well I always was good with animals. Even more with sage mode. Naruto stopped and looked at Haruko. By the way Haruko-san what is make and key? Oh that it's simple. By adding Madu Shikobu and Kenkibu together, it become Madu Kenke Kako, in short. Make and key. Said Takaru and Naruto together. Correct. 
said the younger sister of his homeroom teacher. Now let us welcome our new member once more. Welcome to Make and Key. Well, let's start part two of the meeting, said Azuki. Let's eat. Eat. Yes. I'm so hungry. Later that night. After the banquet that was set up for them, they all headed to their respected home. Wonder where Cha Cha and Kimi went after the party, he said to himself, putting the key into his room. Naruto soon opens the door to reveal the two girls he said earlier, sitting on the floor with their respected luggage on their side. Welcome home. Ch Cha Cha? K Kimi? What are you two doing in my room? Well, we asked the principal to let us take the remaining room of this apartment. She agreed, but since she doesn't trust us, Cha Cha mumbled at the principal using her position to put up a guard on her conquest to win the boy's heart. We are waiting for one more to come. Do you know who it is? That would be me. All eyes turned to look at the violet eyed girl. Minori sensei asked me to be the peacekeeper, so that nothing happens in this room. Her eyes soon looked at the blonde. Also, I wanted to say, thank you, for not harming the bear. Naruto smiled. Don't mention it. I heard your protest, so I decided to use an approach that would make everyone happy. Azuki blushed at that, the guy did it again. While everyone was ready to give the bear a beating or a slight form of harm, he decided acted on pleasing her and the others. Naruto, you are too kind for your own good. Oh, I almost forgot. She pulled out his blazer and handed it to him. This is your. Thanks for letting me borrow it. Cha Cha soon walked up to the red haired girl. Azuki, do you like Naruto? W what? Her blush darkened and Cha Cha noticed it. You do. Now I have another rival for Ruto kun's heart. I will not surrender to you, Minori sensei or Aki sensei, especially to a tomboy like you, said Cha Cha. As Azuki suddenly snapped from both embarrassment and when she heard that remark. Oh, you are dead. Soon the two girls engaged in a fight, forming a cloud of dust with them appearing out of it every so often. Naruto stood beside Kimi, who watched the event with a sweat drop. So how are we going to sleep? There are only three bedrooms, asked the blonde. Kimi feeling a bit brave spoke. W well you can sleep with me. Cha Cha and Azuki stopped and stared at Kimi. The young shy girl had asked the source of their affection to sleep in her room. Another one. No fair. I wanted him to sleep with me, shouted Cha Cha. Absolutely not. He will take the roof, said Azuki. Naruto was about to protest, but the look she gave him non negotiable. He sighed and headed to his room to remove all of his stuff and move it towards the roof. Well, all I can say is that it will not be lonely here anymore, he thought with a smile on his face. It was early morning for many of the students of Tenbi. However, to the members of Make and Key, it's their first day of training. As the sunlight entered the room, a certain blonde teen grumbles in annoyance. Even after all this time, he is still not a morning person. Opening one of his eyes, he glared at the sun's rays. I swear I am going to destroy you, son. One way or another, he thought to himself as he was going to stand up. However, something was preventing him, and it was on top of his left arm. Fully awake, he turned to see what was lying on top of it. He did not expect to see Cha Cha sleeping on his arm, wearing only a pair of orange and black leopard bra and panties. In addition, his arms being underneath her. Well, I wasn't expecting this. He slowly tried to move his arm away from her melons. However, it only caused the dark skinned girl to catch his arm and with a vice like grip placing it between the valley of her. Okay, I just made this several times worse. Thought the shinobi as his arm was getting a good feel of her. Naruto soon tried to push her away, but her grip got tighter. He then focused on making her hands let go of his arm. However, he accidentally cops a feel of her. They were soft almost like pillows. I am so glad no one is here to see. And na Naruto san. Said a familiar voice. The blonde turned to look at his other fellow roommates. There before him, blushing to a new shade of red, was Kimi, who has steam coming out of her ears. Next to her was the sight that spelled pain. The red haired roommate, who was also red but for an entirely different reason from Kimi's, was glaring at him and her body shaking in untold anger. Naruto, she shouted as she sent a fist towards his face. Aero Senen, I hate you was his last thought as he was punched in the face. He had a feeling his deceased teacher, Godfather was responsible for this. While being knocked out the fox was laughing at his host, enjoying the misfortune he has. Minutes later after the punch to the face, and leaving behind a well-formed imprint on it, Naruto began cooking breakfast for the girls. 
he decided to make some pancakes, omelets with cheese combined with tomato and slice of ham topped with basil, strips of bacon caramelized with brown sugar, fruit salad and for drink being either orange juice or milk. I didn't know you could cook Naru Kun, said Cha Cha as she is now fully dressed. She and Azuki had a bit of an argument while he was unconscious. However, the redhead stuttered when Cha Cha brought up of her being jealous on not being in her position. Azuki denied the accusation, but the smidge of red on her face did not help her notion. Yeah, I learned to do this when I was eight years old. I improved by many trial and errors. The blonde said, finishing the last pancake and bringing it to the table. He did not need to mention that he also had to cook for himself when Aero Senin was out doing research. Didn't your parents cook for you? asked Azuki, still a bit mad about finding the blonde in such position with a fellow roommate. My parents died when I was born. He said, putting the last plate on the table. Kimi and Cha Cha felt bad for him being alone at such a young age. While Azuki felt worse for making him recall the loss of his parents. All three had parents growing up to mold them to what they are. He never had one to begin with. I'm sorry. You didn't know Azuki, so there is nothing say sorry for. Besides, they died protecting me. At least I knew that they loved me. He said with a smile and trying to cheer her up. Cha Cha felt the tension in the air. Not wanting to breath it in any more, she decided to change the subject. Come on, we have to eat, so we can have Macon Key's new recruits' first training drill, she said. Taking what she wanted to eat, she drizzled syrup to the pancake and took a bite. Her eyes shot open, then closed, releasing a low volume moan. So good. Azuki and Kimi saw this and they took a bite of their respected meal. The result was the same. It was like eating a five star food but with the appearance of your average everyday food. W wow, said Kimi blushing at having tasted the omelette. This is delicious, Azuki said taking a bite of the bacon. Naruto smiled at their reactions, it felt nice being complimented in his cooking skills. Tenbi schoolyard we now find the members of Macon Key running around the schoolyard. The girls had white shirt with either red or green lining and sport bloomers. The males had white shirt with green lining and white shorts, Naruto's however had some orange lining on his. They were currently on their 30th lap of their 50 laps around the school. Naruto and Anaho were the only one to be able to keep up with Azuki. Takaru and Kengo were far behind and having trouble to breath. Hey, pick up the pace, shouted the violet-eyed girl turning to look at the other two males of their group. You call yourself a man? Even if you say that. Why is the first club activity of the Macon Key is to run 50 laps around the schoolyard? Asked Kengo, who along with Takaru were pushing their bodies beyond their normal limits. Physical activity should be everyday business for the Macon Key. Basic physical strength is necessary, responded the older member of their club. Well, they aren't trained for these things like us, Azuki chan, said Naruto, who had small sweat in his brow. The only reason he does is cause of the seals on his body was on. If he did not have them, these laps would have been finished ages ago. But it also shows them how much they need to improve. Don't give up, Takaru sama, said Anaho with a smile on her face. That may be true, but this is not basic level anymore, said Takaru. The two boys soon heard something coming at them. They turned to see a red shuriken passing through. The shuriken continued its flight until Naruto caught it, and sending it back to his ebony skinned roommate, and the two boys having to dodge it again to not take their heads. The girl jumped in the air and caught the flying projectile with a smile on her face, and continued running behind the boys. Good, Takaru, Kengo. Hurry up or you'll get hit, she said with such innocence as she throws the shuriken into the air. However when it soon lands on the ground it continued to spin and chased after the perverted duo. Not a method I would have used, but it works, said Naruto looking at his fellow male Macon key members. What would you have done? Asked Azuki, not slowing down to talk to the blonde teen. Use their perverted nature for better use. Example give them some kind prize for their hard work. Like a magazine or photo from the internet to be their motivator, said Naruto. It was like doing the reverse method he used to get his perverted teacher to train him. That is actually quite brilliant, said the red haired fighter. She has noticed how the two boys were perverts by how they reacted during the hot spring. So, by using there as a reason to improve, it would make them push themselves. Naruto smiled at that. He has never gained such a nice praise from anybody before. Unless those were from his teachers, never by his fellow classmates or teammates. Kenkibu, Makan Key Club Room. This may sound like a review of the school lesson, 
but the so-called Macon are special weapons each with their own element," said Furin standing in front of the board with details of what they would see in class. Takaru and Kengo were trying to stay awake, but their tired bodies were making it difficult to concentrate. While their fellow male was interested in the tools known as Macon, these tools were like a medium for a person's energy to flow out. Similar to chakra flow, when letting it course through a weapon. He saw how no Macon were the same, each one having their own unique feature suited for their wilder's fighting style, personality, and body structure. The Macon we use are replicas, she saw how the two other males beside Naruto sleeping during her explanation. Annoyed by this, she throw two markers at them, making them focus back on her. I'm teaching you the basics of Macon and yet you're this rude. Why can't you two be like Naruto? said their student council president. However, she thought to herself on why she said the last part. Even do it is true since the spiky blonde haired teen was focused on what she was saying. Nevertheless, the way she said it was like it had another meaning behind it. S. Sorry. The two responded to their superior. I won't accept you as part of the Kenkibu with attitudes like that. Go run 50 laps around the schoolyard until you've completely awake, said Furin with a non negotiable tone. A. Eh. No way. Takaru responded with Kendo paling. They barely could finish their first 50 laps, taking another 50. They may as well die on the schoolyard from exhaustion. I beg you, great president, please spare us. They pleaded hopping to be spared from such a horrible way to die. Like I said last time, they have a long way to go, thought the blonde. No kidding. They make the academy student in our dimension look like Jonin, responded the fox. Naruto nodding in agreement. He mentally laughed at the image of Konohamaru and his friends beating these guys with ease. I I don't care, said the president turning to not look at their direction. Yuka soon clapped her hands at an idea popping to her head. In that case, I have another way to clear your heads, said the bookkeeper of the student council. I don't like where this is going, Naruto said to himself. He saw Yuka move behind the presidents with her hand going towards her skirt. Shit. He recalled how embarrassed Furin was when her underwear was exposed the first time they met. Not wanting for her to feel that again he acted fast. Here. Furin turned to look at what her friend did. Only to see that she lifted up her skirts to reveal her kitty print panties. NYA, NY smash smash. The sound of something being slammed onto the table echoed in the room. The student council president and bookkeeper looked to see Takaru and Kengo with their heads slammed into the table while Naruto was whistling innocently as he looked at another direction. It's a cat, said and exited Anaho. Naruto mentally nodded since he caught a glimpse of her underwear, again. Furin looked at Naruto. She guessed that he was the one to slam the two into unconsciousness. Therefore, she will let it slide for he did a favor to her. The orange-haired female then focused on her friend. What were you thinking? I thought it was a good way to wake those two up. However Naruto-san just made them go to sleep said Yuka. I didn't do anything. They must have fainted at having a perverted overload, replied the blonde with a very plausible excuse. Furin sighed at the excuse he said, but if looked closely there was a faint smile appearing on her lips. Well wake those two up. They need to learn this, she ordered him. Hi, hi. Naruto said looking at the two. I will take a page out of Himagami's book. Thought Naruto as his hands soon were conducting blue electricity. He was grateful for the fox eavesdropping on his mother when she was a Jonin sensei. Her unique idea of elemental training are quite ingenious and unorthodox. Using candles to control the heat of the flame, using any source of water to control its movements, hardening a rock to break a kanai or soften to survive a jump from the roof of a building, using the wind on a target to control its sharpness and finally focusing electricity into a light bulb to control its potency. Wake up pervs! When his hands touched them, the two shouted in pain of being slightly electrocuted. The two boys now fully awake with their hairs turned into afros. They also twitched every so often. Well that is one way to wake them up. Said Furin with a smile on her face. Yuka giggled in agreement. Anaho out of curiosity touched Takaru's hair and, yip, from the electric current zapping her. Putting said finger in her mouth to cool the small burn. Tenbi Academy Dojo, a strong mind is stored within a strong body. The opposite can be the same, said Himagami as she is now training them in meditation. Especially since two of three boys think way too much about other things. She said implying to Takaru and Kengo. The green-eyed girl watched as Naruto was meditating. 
Soon a stray image appeared in her mind, which was Naruto in his swim trunks covered in water and showing off his well-muscled body. The twin-tailed blonde shook her head pushing the image away, what is wrong with me? Ever since that day I had been having images of Naruto in my head. The girl took a deep breath and continued her lecture. Focus your mind properly, abandon all other thoughts. Naruto was into his meditation. Able to take deep and calm breaths and soothing the body. It has been a long time since he did this, it was relaxing. Everyone's admirable. Said a familiar voice. Naruto opened one of his eyes to see Aki standing in front of them. While meditating, it's important to accept what appears in your heart without resistance. Understood? She said as she lowered herself making her jiggle and giving a good view of her cleavage and a small view of her panties. However, this action was mostly aimed for Naruto. The school nurse and principal are currently on a secret competition on who will get Naruto's affection. They saw how he had done a few glimpses on their bodies, not in the way the other male students or staff members do it. His was not fueled by, but admiration to their beauty. Something they had not seen in a very long time. Why even after his own death? Aero Senen is trying to turn me into a pervert. He shouted mentally at his situation. The blonde soon took in a deep breath to calm his body and mind. To accept the things that appears inside your heart without resistance. He thought to himself. For what it felt like a few minutes he stayed in that position until he opened his eyes to see he was somewhere else. He was still in a meditating position but was sitting on an invisible floor above the sky with the sun setting right in front of him. Where am I? He asked as he stood up. He knew he was in his mind, but it felt different. Not the same as when he went to meet with the Kiyubi. Well we are in your heart, King. Naruto turned to look at the source of the voice to find, himself. But his eyes were red with a black sclera and wearing his ninja attire. And I got to say, major improvement. Who are you? And what do you mean by, improvement, asked Naruto to his copy. Well in order. I am the darkness in your heart. All of the negative emotions you bottled up since the time we were neglected in the orphanage. To the time, we were beaten by those mobs made by civilians and shinobis, and kept locked away and hidden behind you idiot facade, said the other Naruto while the real one flinched. We both know that we used that mask to keep ourselves from harm. The villagers would attack us less if we were an idiot. However, we pushed it too far and we began to not act like an idiot, but be one. And also suppress ourselves to be weaker than others. Naruto looked down his counterpart made a point. He was smart, like a few level below that of Inara. However, his fear towards the village made him hide this from the world. Jiraiya found this side out when training. And being here where no one knew of his status, he slowly began to return to his true self. And as for the improvement, I meant by those girls who are crawling slowly into your heart. And the true friends you are making in this world. Mirrors surrounded the two showing images of Takaru, Haruko, Kengo, Yuka, Azuki, Chacha, Kimi, Aki, Minori and Furin. They are slowly without you knowing healing some of the wounds that the village has done to us. So this is what is inside me that I have to accept. The anger and pain of my past. Said Naruto placing a hand over where his heart is. He he got it in one. I would have fought with you for control over your body. But with how you were going I don't feel like doing it. So I will accept you as my king. But, the red-eyed Naruto walked up to Naruto with a glare. If you grow weak I will take over. Yeah keep dreaming. Naruto responded with a smirk. The two smiled as they fist bumped. The eyes of the dark Naruto began to turn blue and his sclera back to white. The two were soon enveloped in a white light blinding them. Naruto soon opened his eyes feeling lighter and better. Then he turned to see two orbs in front of his fellow male colleagues. He was granted with the sight of Takaru being electrocuted while Kengo was burned. You're not abandoning them at all, shouted Himagami. Why can they be like Naruto-kun? Wait kun. The girl shouted mentally not showing her reaction to it. Naruto sweat dropped at her shouting the two perverts. Good luck with that. If he couldn't do that with a super pervert of a sensei. There is no way she could with these two. Tenbi dormitory after a long day of training. Azuki, Chacha, Kimi and Naruto were in their room eating some homemade pizza. The blonde Jinchuriki has learned many new dishes from other parts of the world thanks to his shadow clones. Therefore, he decided to make a homemade marinara sauce with four cheese, pepperoni and basil. And garlic butter with seasoning on the crust. And a marinara dip for the crust if they wanted it. This is so good. Said the ebony-skinned girl. 
She has tasted many different pizzas before. But the way the cheese slowly melted in her mouth along with the taste of marinara was divine. Thanks I never really tried doing this before. I thought it would turn out bad. But guess I was wrong. Said Naruto taking a bite. He still loved ramen, but this was a close second. Then thought of what tomorrow was. Hey what are you girl doing tomorrow? I have some things to do in town. But I will be back by dinner. Said Azuki not giving much information to what she is going Toto. Well me and Kimi are going to watch an anime marathon. Said Cha Cha excitedly along with Kimi. Anime. What is that? Asked Naruto. However Redhead groaned at what was about to occur. What? You do not know what anime is. What about manga? Asked Kimi who was shocked at what she has heard. Naruto shakes his head in never hearing such things. Her face paled a little on the revelation of such blasphemy, she soon disappeared from the table later to bring some books. Handing one to Naruto to read, and by the look in her eyes she will not accept it, no, as an answer. Anime and manga are both creation of art and literature. Hours, weeks, months of hard work done by men and women who want to send a message to the younger generation. Stories of wanting us to be like the protagonist of these grand tales. To be heroes who defend the weak, martial artist who uses their fighting style for good, even magician who uses their power for the betterment of mankind. And showing that hard work, friendship and determination is how you gain true strength. Said Kimi as a fire was burning in her eyes showing the passion she has towards the subject. Anime and manga are a way of life. One that all humankind should uphold and respect. For without anime and manga the world will fall into total chaos. And these glorious stories will never be able to shine us in our path to righteousness, truth and justice. Said Kimi who at the end began to breathe heavily. When her mind calmed down she blushed in embarrassment. I did it again. Cha Cha however was clapping in the inspirational speech. A bit of tears was visible in her eyes. That was beautiful Kimi Chan. Best speech you did yet. The ebony skin girl said wiping the tears away. Naruto however began to read from the manga called, Roroni Kenshin. A man who used an odd katana with the blade placed on the grove. He continued reading and found him using a style of kenjutsu that used speed and precise strikes, along with quick drawing of the sword. It was a style that was made to make the opponent wonder where the strike will come. A style that falls into the category of, unpredictable, Karama. I think I found the perfect sword style for myself and my Makan. Thought the blonde shinobi. Karama looked through his memories at what he saw. The sword style looks similar to that of Batojutsu. If this, Kenshin was using a normal katana all those attacks he did would have been an instant kills. On a side note this is a civilian human who has no chakra and has pure above normal physical strength, speed, accuracy and reflex. If we put what those in our dimension can do combined with this sword style. This sword style could possibly wipe out an army of high ranked janins and its unpredictable nature suit you so well. I agree with you learning this. Said the fox in approval. Maybe these mangas and animes could help you with your makin. Since you can manipulate the element with ease why not replicate attacks that are in them and integrate them into real life. The blonde began to think of all the possibilities. Sure his control over the elements was already more powerful than those of back home. But these mangas could have multiple attacks revolving the eight elements Aramentaru poses. With it he plans to ask Kimi later on building an anime and manga list of people using these elements. For if he finds a way back he can kick the remaining Akatsuki asses seven ways to Sunday. Naruto Universe, one hour since Naruto was sent to the Makan Universe. In a secluded area in a region between Takigakure and Otogakure was a secret hideout of the supposed Madara Uchiha. Now he was pissed towards his young kin who was more trouble than he is worth. He has sent the Kayubi's Jinshuriki to God know where. Now there was a major damper in his plan. Thankfully Zetsu has told him of some, rifts, appearing randomly around the elemental nation. Some of it was in the sky, near the ground, within caves and even in the water. In addition, never reappearing in the same place twice, and only giving a three minute window of being open before it vanishes from that area. Most likely caused by the two boys when they clashed in the samurai bridge. Thankfully these rift are rather simple to find if you are a sensor since it was generating something similar yet different to chakra. Zetsu has tested the thing sending an animal into it. However not even a few seconds in the creature was torn limb from limb. So they assumed that a being with a strong healing factor or maybe as small as a Zetsu spore. Could survive the travel through the rifts. Kabuto. 
Yes, Madara SSSSAN. Asked the white snake scaled man wearing a hooded cloak. Behind him a white snake came out from an opening. Do you have any Edo Tensai that can be spared? Maybe some Chunin ranked nins? Asked the orange mask assailant. Kabuto soon pulled out a scroll. Soon unrolling it to have various seals matrix containing vials of shinobis who are Chunin or Jonin ranks. The right hand man of Orochimaru separated the vials into two sections. Those who are weak and are expendable, and those who are powerful and will be used in the upcoming war. Ah, here we go, said Kabuto, infusing chakra into a seal, pulling out a vial full of blood. This SSS will do for our little exploration on where the Kyubi Jinchuriki might be. But I will have to modify him to be a challenge to the boy. But that will take only 15 minutes. Get it done. Without the fox, the plan can't be fulfilled, said Madara as he leaves having Kabuto do the procedure for the Edo Tensai. Zetsu will soon add some of his spore onto it and lead it to the location of one of those rift. Soon I will find you my pet, and then my dream will be fulfilled. Makan Universe Naruto looked at his closet. The only clothing he had was his school uniform and his torn shinobi clothing. I need more clothes. Naruto soon put on the pants and shirt from his school uniform and shinobi sandals. Hey Kimi, cha-cha I am heading out going to buy some needed clothes, he said to them as he walked behind the sofa. The two girls were quite into the show that was showing on the television. Okay see you soon. Come on Goku. Beat that lizard's ass. Cha-Cha responded before going back into the show. Kimi was also cheering for the Saiyan to beat the white-skinned alien. He giggled at their reaction to the fighter on television. Even if he would agree with them. What the guy was wearing his favorite color. Sue him. Mall it has been 50 minutes since Naruto has been in the mall. He has bought all the essential clothing he needed for his duration in this dimension. Along with making two pre-orders, he bought several shirts, pants, underwears, socks and a few pairs of shoes that got his attention. After his purchase he decided to wear some of his newly purchased clothes. He now wore orange hoodie over a gray t-shirt with a crimson tribal fox head, a pair of blue jeans and a black with orange lining sneakers. Naruto then sealed most of his purchased clothes and school uniform in a storage seal he has on his arm. Only staying with two bags full of shirts and pants. Okay I had purchased everything I need, it's nice to purchase something at the real price for once. He said with a smile. Soon his stomach rumbled. Well let's try out one of these restaurants. He said walking towards what looks like a maid cafe. Let's try this place out. Dot huh. Naruto says seeing Takaru and Himagami. Takaru was wearing a yellow shirt with black sleeves, gray pants and blue sneakers. He was also carrying numerous bags that Himagami bought. While Himagami was wearing a black dress with red-pink corset and ribbons, a black headband with white frills and her signature green beads on her twin tails, black socks with red-pink frills and black shoes. Naruto can say that it suited her very well. Naruto also felt three familiar presents and one that was above them. Expanding his sensory range he felt Haruko, Anaho and Kengo were not too far away from where they were. However the guy above was different for he was leaking negative emotions. Those three are a thousand years too early to sneak up on me. Karama can you keep an eye on that guy above us, let me know when he tries to attack. He thought as earning a grunt from the fox, Naruto soon called the two out with a joyful smile. Hey Takaru-san, Himagami-chan. The looked at his direction. Hey Naruto. Responded Takaru. Good afternoon, Naruto. Himagami said with a small smile. So, what you two doing at the mall? Also, you look great today, Himagami chan. He said with a smile while his eyes are closed. He also didn't see the blush on her face. I, I'm punishing the idiot here for peeking. So, he has to carry all the bags that I have purchased. Said the twin tail girl. Why did I stutter? How can his simple compliment affect me so much? Naruto nodded in understanding. Good strict punishment. It also works to help build up his strength and endurance. I approve. He said with a mischievous smile. The girl responded with the same smile, while Takaru cried at his friend not going to help him take some bags off. So are you two going here to eat? Yes we are so. Would you like to join us? Himagami asked shyly. I would love to. Since it would be weird eating at a place by myself. Also I am paying for my food, this is non-negotiable. He said with the two nodding. They then went inside with the two. Welcome back, mistress and masters, said two girls greeting him at the front door. 
both of them wearing some maid uniforms. Um. This is, said Takaru looking at the two who greeted them. A maid cafe, don't you know? Himagami responded with her arms crossed. I've heard of them. The glasses wearing boy responded. Is Madogia free? Yes, mistress. The blonde girl asked gaining a response. The three soon were given a booth. Naruto sat on the outside besides Himagami both were reading from the menu. While Takaru sat by himself with the purchased bags on the inside of the booth. Naruto lowered his menu and looked around the restaurant. Since he only has ever been inside the Ichiraku ramen stand. This place is nice. Said the blonde shinobi with a smile. He also looked around to see a few people in the store. I wonder why there aren't that many people here. It's because there aren't many people here in this town. And because of this place. Responded Himagami to her fellow blonde. However she was soon interrupted. Mistress, masters. Said a familiar voice. Naruto turned to look at the source and had a light blush due to the sight. Welcome back to Mansion Macaron. Today I, the maid, Azuki Chan. Naruto interrupted his roommate's introduction. His eyes was focused on what she is wearing. It was a black maid uniform, with pink frill apron that was open where her are, a red bow with a gold jewelry with an orange gem inside it and light purple thigh high socks. Na 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 Naruto. She shouted in shock letting her tray fall to the floor. Wh wa what are you doing here? Azuki shouted getting close to his face. The short red haired girls looked at Himagami who sat beside him. You. Rage was soon noticeable in her voice. However Himagami simply ignored the girl's cry. I'll take the usual, love carbonara. A hand painted love omelet rice, for Takaru. And, she turned to look at Naruto to make his order. Oh and I will take the, love chicken miso ramen. The shinobi said. Azuki wrote the orders before she got back to glaring at the lowly. Wh what is the meaning of this Himagami? She looked to her left with rage and right with embarrassment. Why did you bring them here? Oh. Is it alright to talk to your master like that Azuken? Himagami said finishing with a smug at Azuki. She know how to push the right buttons. Naruto thought impressed by his fellow blonde skill to get into his roommate's skin. While Karama snickered at the whole scene. I understand. She said while suppressing her rage to beat Takaru and shout at Himagami. Naruto she can forgive since he was most likely dragged to the restaurant. I'll bring you the food immediately, she said folding the pan. Takaru quivered at the sight of the enraged girl. While Naruto was impressed by her show of strength. And Himagami just smiled at her work. Please enjoy yourselves. There aren't that many customers in the shopping mall for some reason. Asked Takaru after he got out of his fright. Like I was saying earlier there aren't many people in Tenbi to begin with. She said and then looked behind Takaru. Also, look at the manager. Both boys looked at the person she was staring at. It was a man with a blonde girly hairstyle, who was very muscular with a strong jawline. And he was wearing the same clothing as the girls and fixed the plate Azuki folded instantly. Naruto suppressed himself from feeling disgusted since he had a few people in the red light district who were crossdressers that helped him hide during his birthday. As a form of thanks he helped them out by teaching them Oro no Jutsu. A true transformation Jutsu that turned them into a real girl. This allowed them to increase their business by 80%. I heard there are a lot of scared customers. She continued her explanation. I see. Takaru said a bit scared of the manager. Sorry to have you wait. Said Azuki placing each of their order before them. Takaru had an omelette with green peas on top of it. While Himagami had a pasta dish, which she was eating happily. And Naruto had his ramen dish. He had small tears on how it could rival the Ichirakus in flavor. Ah. The glasses wearing teen said catching the attention of the waitress, maid and Himagami. The blonde gothic lowly asked what was wrong. I don't really like green peas. He said disapprovingly. Naruto mentally sighed since he used to be in the same book. It was thanks to Jiraiya that he began to eat vegetables. Hey being told that not eating it would keep you short, you would start eating that stuff every day. Master, Himagami and Takaru both looked up at the red-haired girl. If you're too picky about food, Azuki said opening a bottle of ketchup. She soon began to write on the omelette with the tomato paste. It'll turn like this. Please eat it all up, Naruto opened his eyes to see the kanji for, death, see, on the omelette surface. Please let me eat it. The boy said in tears with fear very noticeable in his voice. Azuki, HMPH, and turned to look away from him. I have to say Azuki, 
This is the second best ramen I ever had. The spiky haired blonde said as he continued to eat. Azuki felt her cheeks heat up at the praise. However, she quickly brushed it off at hearing her ramen being placed as second best. Then what is the first best? She asked curiously. That belongs to the first people who introduced ramen to me. Their name is Tuchi and Ayame Ichiraku. They are a father and daughter who own their ramen stand called Ichiraku Ramen. Naruto said, placing the bowl on the table, and a warm smile appeared on his face. They hand make their own broth, noodle, and use fresh ingredients in all of their dishes. Ever since I ate from there, I had become addicted to it. And in a way, I see them as family. Ayame treated me like a little brother, while Tuchi was like that awesome uncle you wish to brag about. Azuki soon nodded in understanding. She had tasted a lot of amazing food, but none could take away the place of her mom homemade onigiri with strawberry filling inside. Some came a close second, but none could take its place. I can live with that. Minutes later, masters, mistress, goodbye. The two girls who greeted them earlier said while they bowed, while Azuki stood in the back looking away with faint blush. Naruto smiled at the action, it was a nice way to make someone want to come back. See you back at the dorm Azuki-chan. The blonde said leaving with Takaru and Himagami. This caused the two maid who departed them to rush at Azuki for questions. Not bad. Himagami said with a smile, her green eyes looked at a fair Azuki being questioned on her connection to Naruto. The blonde chuckled at the small prank he did. He wondered why he stopped doing it, since it was a nice way to relax. Park the three teens soon arrived at the park near the lake with a few of the mountain near their school. Takaru and Himagami decided to sit on the bench, while Naruto was leaning on the railings. Himagami stretched herself from all the walking, while Takaru was exhausted from carrying all her purchased clothing. How was it? That meal was pretty thrilling, huh? She asked her two males beside her. It sure was. Naruto said with a smile. My life has shortened. Responded Takaru. While Naruto snickered at the possible truth. But Azuki Senpai's get up. Right? She turned to Takaru. I couldn't hold back a laugh the first time I saw it, either. Said Himagami with a smile. True. Naruto said putting his own opinion in the conversation. It's very hard to picture Azuki Chan wearing such a thing. That style of clothing suit more with you Himagami Chan. He said turning to look at his fellow blonde. His breath hitched a little at how cute she looked with a small smile. Oh, it'd suit me more. The twin tail blonde said with a teasing her fellow blonde. Making Naruto turned around to not let her see how red his cheeks were. Her eyes soon widened and looked to her left. What am I doing? I was supposed to be confirming that mark that is on Takaru's chest. But I am being distracted from my objective due to Naruto-kun. Why? Why is it that being so close to him makes me lose focus? Why is my heart pumping so hard? Naruto asked himself never experiencing such a thing before. As he was about to turn back, after he calms his heartbeat, he hears the sound of leaves moving closer towards them. His eyes focused on the bushes that were out of place. You can ge let me see your chest. Naruto was saying but was soon interrupted by Himagami. He turned around to see her forcefully grabbing Takaru's shirt with a glare on her face. The shinobi looked confused on why she want to see Takaru's chest, but then he recalled a conversation he had with his tenant. Flashback, wait Takaru can what? Naruto said looking at Kayubi. The strongest of the bijus continued on his discovery. It was faint but twice did I feel this element being absorbed by him. The fox tapped the water on the floor to reveal the moments that Takaru absorbed elements. The first time was when he kissed the twin tail girl. It was a small drain but enough to be noticed. The second time was when you saved that. Azuki, he was starting to drain the elements in the air but you knocked him out, stopping him from continuing. And the source appeared to be on his chest, more specifically his left bicep. Naruto looked at the two pictures on the water. Maybe this is the reason he can't use a makan. His own body works different from others. Instead of releasing elements, he drains them from others and the area around him. Similar to that Yoroi guy during the Chunin exam who was draining Sasuke's chakra. But it also sounds similar to how I absorb nature chakra to enter sage mode. Yes, and most likely works in a similar way. Boosting his own physical abilities by how much he has absorbed. And maybe giving him a healing factor. Kayubi said as the image vanished. Naruto thought of how useful the ability was. And how dangerous it could become if in the hand of someone who understand its mechanics. If Takaru trained himself and wasn't so weak, 
He may become the strongest person next to us. The fox nodded in agreement. End of flashback, hold on. This snapped both blondes from what they were doing. Out of the bushes came three boys. All of them shared a pink over shirt. Who is it? I'm Tanaka Bayou. I'm Kobayashi A. I'm Yamato Shizuki. The three said males. We're the Himagami Kodama fan club. The trio said with a flag that had the head of Himagami in pink on a black background. Written in bold letters was her name and underneath it was the word, love, with a heart under it. Dot god damn fanboys. Naruto thought with his eyebrow twitching at the counterpart to the bane of all boys, fangirls. He hated these types of guys who put males in such a bad light. Himagami let go of Takaru and looked down at the three with a stare of authority. What do you want? We are those who admire your beauty and have found together. Said the one in the middle. To us Kodama-san is a goddess. Said the flag holder. We are prepared to sacrifice ourselves for the goddess anytime. Said the last member of the group. We have to clean up the paths Kodama-san will walk. The glasses wearing teen said. Before Kodama-san goes into a shop, we'll definitely check it for her. The one on the left said. We have also created a Kodama movement map. Said the chubby guy while the one in the middle brought a board of tenbi with all the movement Himagami does daily. So we can let new members predict your weekly tours. Wow they are as bad as the SULS, Naruto shuddered at remembering the organization of fangirls that were devoted to the last Uchiha. The SULS or the Sasuke Uchiha Love Society, was one of the second biggest organization of fangirls of Konoha. Agreed kit but they could be as bad as the one your father had. The fox responded recalling the horde of fangirls who were after Minato Namikaze. The Uchiha was lucky to be only have it within Konoha. Minato had one that covered almost the entire elemental nation, minus Suchi no Kuni for obvious reasons. He shivered at the memory of Kashina standing on a mountain of beaten up members who dared tried to take her, Mina Kun, from her. Are you a bunch of idiots? Himagami said with disgust in her tone of voice. Tanaka soon began to tremble in possible, rage. We adore you so much, how can we allow you to be fooled by such a fishy person? That's right, even if we have to use force we'll prevent that. Responded Kobayashi. We'll keep that guy back. Yamato said getting ready to fight. Naruto immediately understood that their aim was at Takaru since he spent with Himagami the longest. Is Tenbi's entrance exam this year a competition to measure the foolishness of idiots? Asked Himagami looking at her fellow blonde. Naruto shrugged not sure if it is. The blonde lowly soon summoned the two orbs of energy he sees beside her. On command the two charged towards her fanboys. Attack. They shouted. But soon Tanaka and Yamato were picked up by the orange orb, while Kobayashi was picked up by the yellow orb. Soon they were thrown into the water. Go cool your heads in there, idiots. The twin tail blonde said as the two orbs soon floated beside her and vanished. Naruto, killing intent coming from the tree line. Kayubi said making his jailer look at the direction. Himagami and Takaru soon followed. Is there still another idiot left? No, no said a man wearing a brown hoodie with an orange line at the end of the sleeve, black pants with a silver chain and sneakers. He also has dark magenta hair and wearing a black white cap. My goal is a little different. He raised his hand to hold the front of his hat. I'd like you to accept a battle against me. The mysterious man removed his hat and licked his lips. Macon blade snake. He said creating two curved wrist blades that are longer than his own arm. With a quick motion two energy blades shot out towards them. The attack hit where they were, but as the dust clear only the bench was destroyed. The attacker looked to see a figure has jumped to avoid his attack. As it closed in it was revealed to be Himagami. The girl soon land on the wrist blade attached to his left arm with her right foot, while her left was on his head. Meanwhile Naruto jumped a good distance away with Takaru since this was Himagami's fight. The blonde soon caught all the boxes after he let go of his trembling friend. I see. However, to attack without warning or performing a ritual first is not what a warrior would do. She jumped back to make distance from her opponent. You defiler. Himagami said while in the air before she lands on the ground. I'll show you my power, little girl, he said raising both his hands. You're from Kamigari aren't you? The girl said with disgust in her voice. Kamigari? Naruto thought as he would check this group on a later date. You only got it half right, said the man. Half right? Himagami asked confused on the man's word. If I bring back the combat data of a talented student from Tenbi, K 
Kamigari will make use of me, said the assailant. Kamigari. Asked Takaru as he looked at the two as sweat began to pour down from his face. What are the two of them talking about? He asked to no one in particular. That's how it is so let me finish you off. He said with some of his blood vessels appearing on his face. Soon he unleashed numerous energy blades towards her. Himagami began to hit the energy blade to not land a blow on her. While Naruto was doing the same to protect himself and Takaru. However one of the attacks got Takaru but it didn't injure him, but it did cut his clothes revealing a bit of his chest. Takaru. She said as she turned to look at Takaru who has taken a hit. But her eyes focused on his exposed chest. There's no mark. Thought Himagami. However this moment of distraction allowed the mystery man to send a strongest energy attack towards her. Himagami-chan. Naruto rushed towards the girl. The two were soon caught in the attack and were sent flying towards the water. I got you. He said as he grabs hold of her small soft hands. Naruto flips them around so he would crash with the water first, while placing her in a bridal carry hold. However what occurred was what no one expected. Naruto skidded in the water with Himagami in his arms. When he stopped he was still standing on the water as if it was solid. W what? What? Was the only word that anyone could come up with on what they are seeing. Naruto looked down at the shocked Himagami. Are you okay? He asked with smile. Why yes. She said faintly now knowing how he was holding her. Along with how warm he felt. This. This feels nice. She thought as she adjusted herself to savor the warmth. Naruto soon jumps and lands back on the concrete a few feet away from the ledge and placed Himagami down. Much to her silent ire. Do you mind if I finish him off? He said looking at the man before him. The girl smiled at the thought. Be my guest. Naruto smirked as he raised his left hand. Destroy all evil. Aramentaru. Soon his makan appeared from the gray light. Naruto got a hold of the handle and slowly drew the blade. Awaken blade of water. Mizu. Naruto quickly unsheathed th katana from the scabbard. Now revealing a blue blade while water began to swirl around it. For using you makan for evil. Guess I will take you down first. The assailant shouted as he charged at the two. I will destroy your makan. Naruto mentally commands the water to make a thin coat around his blade and block the man's makan. Light green static began to form from the contact between their makan. However the deadlock soon ended as Naruto pushed his blade further and cut through one of the man's blade snake. H how? He shouted looking at his broken right blade. Simple by focusing the water into such a thin coating around my makan. It causes an effect similar to pressurized water. Thus increasing the sharpness of the water. Causing my makan to gain a boost in its cutting ability. Not in the same league as lightning or wind, but enough to beat someone punk like you. The blonde shinobi soon sliced the man's other blade. Be gone. Naruto commanded the water of the lake to create a giant dragon made of water with yellow eyes. This is for you Zabuza. Water dragon bullet. Naruto sent the dragon towards the man sending him all the way towards the other side of the lake. While the assailant broke through four trees before he fell with a broken back and rib cage. Naruto soon sheathes his makan and sent away. Turning around to look at a surprised Himagami. I though your makan can only use as lightning, she said standing up. He rested Aramentaru on his shoulder. Nope, my makan can use eight elements. I already showed two of the said eights, and might reveal the rest in due time, he said with a smirk. Eight elements, that sound a lot like. Her thoughts was soon interrupted by Naruto. Also about Takaru, Himagami looks at Naruto. Do you know of an ability to absorb elements from others or the area around them? She flinched at his question which Naruto noticed. So I was right. He does have the same ability as brother. Her green eyes looked at the brown haired boy. The convergence of the soul, blood pointer. She soon sighed at knowing that he is not her enemy. She then focused her attention to Naruto. Thank you for saving me. Naruto smiled while his makan vanished in a particle of light. Well you are one of my precious people Himagami Chan. Protecting you and those precious to me is the least I can do. The twin tail blonde blushed at hearing being called a precious person, it made her heart flutter and being seen as something so valuable. Well, here's a little appreciation. Himagami grabbed the side of his cheeks, brought his head down a little for her to plant a kiss. E. Ah. Huh. Was the scream of the few who were there. Takaru and Kendo screaming first, later the Himagami fanboys, 
and lastly a surprised and blushing Naruto. Meanwhile Anaho and Haruko were both blushing at the sight. Ha 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 ha. I like this girl. Ha 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 ha. The massive chakra beast roared in laughter as he rolled inside the boy head. Kodama sans purity. I'll kill you, I'll kill you. Were the screams of agony from the Himagami fanboys. Kendo and Takaru grabbed the still surprised Naruto's shirt. Why do good things only happen to you? shouted the glasses wearing male. Recalling the blonde's luck on being with the girls in the hot spring. Give it to me. Give me an indirect kiss with Himagami Senpei. Shouted Kendo going towards Naruto lips. But they were soon blown away by a strong wind blast shooting them into the water. Naruto later touched his lips recalling the softness of Himagami's lips. Meanwhile the mentioned girl did the same thing with hers. That felt nice. They thought in unison. Soon the group headed to their respected dorm and Naruto told his roommates about the assailant who attacked them, but kept quiet about the kiss, listening to the fox's advice. He soon went up to his loft and went to sleep early, but not without having a smile on his face for the rest of the night. Naruto universe all done, said Kabuto looking at his modified Edo Tensai. How do you feel? Asking if the modification is affecting his movements. He also placed the Zetsu spores on his flak jacket. The white-skinned plant man gave him a special group of spore that acts similar to the cage bunshin but more durable. Thus once destroyed it can transfer its knowledge to the original. The said corpse did some simple motions, from moving his fingers and arms, to moving his leg and rotating his head, getting adjusted to the modification done to his body. I feel great. Better than I had before. Excellent now you remember what the mission revolves on. Kabuto ordered the corpse. Yeah. Find the demon brat and see that he is there. If possible bring him back to have the fox extracted. I can beat him to a pulp but not kill. Said the Edo Tensai. Good. Nodded the Kabuto. Then you are ready to head out, Mizuki. The corpse walked into the light revealing a white shoulder length hair man. With a slight hint of blue to it and green eyes around a black sclera. He wore the standard attire of the Konoha Nin before his defection. Which included flak jacket and forehead protector that he wore like a bandana. A deranged smirk was on his face as he headed towards the portal of where the brat has went. I'm going to enjoy this. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.